things. What's going on, people? It's a lot of people up in here. So before I say anything, I got to give thanks, love, and light to Planted by Faith for giving me this opportunity. All right, please. Please, 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 please. All right, and of course, Brother Rashad, because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. This is like he was very resilient and focused on making sure that I got here so I could talk to you the same way that your church or your community reached out to you to make sure y'all were here. So it was a lot of people that like worked together in order to make this moment come about. So I just want to give thanks to everybody for this moment because now we're all here together, right? Right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so usually I ask everybody how you're doing. That's how I like starting my stuff off because I want to see where everybody's energy's at. And y'all going to be giving me like the crazy puzzle look or am I going to get some energy? So how y'all doing, Greenville? I'm talking about. I ain't got to do it twice. I be mean, getting the people like, hey, how y'all doing? Like, no. So I'm here to give y'all some demonstrations on cooking because I'm all about plant-based diets, okay? That's what it's all about. But I understand. It's Greenville. It's South Carolina. We in the South. Okay? And it's like, yeah, I like some vegetables on my plate, but it's not going to fill me up, though, man. Like, I need some flavor. I don't want no lettuce. I don't want no carrots, tomatoes. I need some pot roast. I need some brisket. I need some chitlins. I need some hamburgers, some hot dogs, some sausage. No? Wrong? Turkey wings? Huh? How about the whole fried turkey? Just drop the whole turkey in the oil. Now, I got a question for y'all. Now, people who decide to eat meat, right? Let's just say poultry. I'm like, you eat the thing because you're trying to get the energy of the thing, right? So it's like... Why eat a chicken and a turkey? Those are the birds that don't fly. I guess they're easy to catch. <laughs> so, that's just to loosen everybody up a little bit, okay? All right. We got some science coming at you. So, for those who might not be familiar with who I am, let me introduce myself. I just got up here to start talking, right? Uh, my name is KT, the arts degree. It's like... All right, y'all youngins with these names, right? But the KT are initials, okay, for Kamani Tate. The arch degree was a title given to me by my brothers. Um, they're known as Red and Blue Pill, um, and they're also pillars. So they was like, you complete us, so you're the arch degree. And, you know, in order for people to get that, that higher thought, they got to walk through a threshold, and we, we're the threshold, but you complete the threshold. I was like, oh, that's dope. Yeah, I could go with that. <laughs> But that's, that's who my, my, my name is. Now, I had an interesting question um, that the pastor asked me last night. She was like, so, have you always been eating this way? When did you start eating this way? And I was like, actually, I was born in this, literally. My mother was the first generation that was born outside of the Caribbean because I'm from the Virgin Islands. Okay, I got family in Guyana, Nevis, um, Antigua, Trinidad, you know, all up in there. She was the first one born in the States, specifically in Harlem. So she came up with her children the American way. Now that American way included inner ear infections and inoculations and colds. So after being so overwhelmed, she went to her mother and she was like, yo, how did you do this? You know how we do to y'all? when we get older and have children about everything. She was like, but how did you do it? No, really. How did you do it? How did you sit in the emergency room? How did you run back and forth like a, and you're still tick like, it looked like I'd be burnt out if I keep doing this. And she looked at her and said, I didn't have to do that. <laughs> I 
What you, what you what you mean you have to do that? Oh, I got to turn this on too, I guess for the for the people. There we go. I got to get used to technology. So she was like, "What do you mean? You didn't have to." Like she was like, "No, because back home every day they lined us up and they gave us bush tea." What do you mean, like Lipton's original? Like <laughs> that's all I got to do. I got to run to the store and get some. Get some Lipton's and everything's good. She was like, no, the herbs, the herbs, the herbs, the herbs. So from that point, my mother just got this fire inside of her. But she was like, I have to get back home to see what she's talking about. And it took some time. But she finally lined it up when she was pregnant with me. And she had to just rush down there because she had a vision. I know y'all have had visions before in y'all dream state where she was told if she did not return home to have me, that I would die and she would die. Now this was in her dream. You know, she didn't have no haagen dazs before she went to sleep. No horror movie or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? That's just what was told to her. So she listened, like a lot of us don't do. <laughs> then wonder why we get knocked upside the head, you know? So she, she ran back home, she got, she got back to St. Croix, one night at 2.30 in the morning, right? It's her cousin. Uh, it's 2 in the morning. Like, what's up? Oh, you want to ride with me into the rainforest to go get some iron tonic? Wait, what? It's 2.30 in the morning. You want me to run in the rainforest? She was like, come on, man. You got to come. I don't want to go alone. And my mother, she has a huge heart, so she was like, I can't let my cousin go up in the rainforest by herself, two in the morning. All right, let's go. So they go into the rainforest, up in the mountains, round and 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 round. round. So they get to the top, get out the car, pitch black. Only sounds you hear is those of nature, sounds you don't want to get acquainted with, 2.30 in the morning. But amongst those sounds, she hears, ah, 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 ah. No, that's not Count Dracula from Sesame Street. That's Dr. Sabi laughing in the middle of the woods. So they go walking. There's a trailer set up right in the rainforest. There's a group of people in there. He's building with them. She's just like blown back. Like, who is this guy? What is going on? I don't understand. But after sitting down and listening, she understood why she was told to come back home was to meet this man. She was pregnant with me. She was anemic beyond recognition. And when she did um, go into labor, she hemorrhaged. Her hemoglobin level was a two. And for those who don't know what that means, <laughs> for women it's supposed to be about a 14, 15. For men it's supposed to be about a 17. She was the that same deuce you throw up when you roll up out of here, right? So they, they propose, get a blood transfusion. She was like, cool, my father's on the island, get his blood. Couldn't find my, my grandfather. So they was going to put a stranger's blood inside of her. And she said, no, you're not. And they said, yes, you are. And she says, no, I'm not. And they said, get out. So here I am, fresh born, baby, jaundice covered in blood, iron level down, her, le her levels too. And they kicked us right on out of there. But if it wasn't for Dr. Sabi taking us in and giving us the iron tonic every day for seven days, I wouldn't be talking to y'all right now. Okay? Thank you, thank you. That clap is for my mother. <laughs> because, I, you know, you gotta, you gotta give up to the woman before you start with anything, all right? And we're going to talk a lot about mama today. All right, so me coming up in this household and being part of that whole history of Dr. Sabi, you know, in New York and the, the court case and everything, I was right there. I was just a little kid, big eyes, absorbing all this information, getting fed all this food, taking all these herbs, learning, 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 until I got older. And I was like, okay, I think I know what I'm here to do, you know? And what I noticed was, People need to know about physiology, they need to know about chemistry, they need to know about herbs, but most importantly, they need something to eat. Because that's usually why people don't want to change. Because they're addicted to the cravings, 
that have been induced inside of them and they feel connected to that thing that they're addicted to. And they're like, look, I don't got no problem going that healthy route, but this whole area right here just ain't agreeing with it. It might, it might agree down here and throughout the whole body, but that first impression, like it's just not working. So I started trying to figure, okay, what is it that everybody's caught up on? And you know what you caught up on? Your mommy. All addicted to your mommy. Y'all know what I'm talking about right now, do you? So you're thinking I'm saying your mommy like your mother. No, I'm saying U-M-A-M-M-I, you mommy, which is one of your taste sensations that govern savory flavors, which is in the steak and the oxtail and the thigh of the chicken and all that stuff, the macaroni, that you can't let go. It's the umami. Now, when you isolate umami and create a salt out of it, it is called monosodium glutamate. Huh? Glutamate and umami are the same thing. But glutamate is a natural chemical that's inside of usually sea vegetables and a lot of fruits and vegetables. So in order for you to get the rich, like, homegrown taste out of the meat you eat, what do you do? Do you just, like, throw it in a pan for two seconds, throw salt on it, and then eat it? How long y'all cooking that meat for? <laughs> Till it's done. Whenever it says that, right? Be three days later. So I don't understand it. Something that's dead, you'll give all your life to, but something that's alive, you don't give no life to. It kind of seems counterproductive if you ask me. See, people see fruits and vegetables, and they think, oh, I just need to steam it. Light saute. No, you better, you better break your foot off in that thing. Because I don't care if you put a neck bone, the, the uh, pork belly, in collard greens, it don't make the collard green cook no quicker, do it? How long you got to cook them collards for? Long time. Because you're breaking it down and you want to release all those properties that are inside so it can come to the surface. All right? So that's what I'm here to tell y'all about. I'm trying to tell y'all that you have to go back to spending more time cooking your food. Because now you got other people cooking for you. Huh? When I came out my mother's womb, stepped on out that thing, right? What was my first thought? Hungry. Right? Did I look for a knife and a fork? No. I... Looking for that thing. I've never seen a breast in my life. But for some reason, I know I need one right now. How did I know that, right? Now, the nipple and the breast is not the food. I don't start eating her breasts. I mean, people today might start doing that because everybody's caught up in that flesh, you know? But no, it's what the breast produces, which is colostrum and then the milk, which is a combination of cannabinoids and glutamate and DHA and all these properties that you need to learn how to what? To eat. When you're inside of your mother, you're not eating. You're not using your stomach or your liver. How do you know to digest? Who teaches you that? The first teacher, your mother, through the milk. Because once that milk goes in there and goes down, it turns everything on. It gets everything activated. So when you get older, your mother starts preparing you food. And that same food that she prepares you, why is mama's food so good? Huh? It's all you know? What else? What is it about mama's food? She, she, yes, say it louder. Love. Now that's just a word, but if we can describe the whole concept of love, what's really happening? It's the satisfaction. Okay, that's good. We're going to get back there. Think, remind me about that one. Leptin, remember that word. Your mother created you. 
So what does she want? She wants you to grow. She wants you to be intelligent. She wants you to have purpose. This intent is in the food as she's cooking it. Food is just a vessel. It has all the components from the sun, obviously, to give you the things you need. But what turns it on? What activates it? It's the love that the mother gives, that your auntie gives, that your dad gives, your uncle gives, whoever it was that raised you and loved you and cared for you and cooked for you. They put that in the food. And it's not just from them thinking it and speaking it. It's because they, they, they clipped all the tips of the green beans for a whole hour. They de-ribbed all the collard greens for two hours. They went outside and they picked the zucchini that they planted last season. All that work just to put a plate in front of you. So of course when you eat it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fulfilling. So I want y'all to let me know, one in the morning when you stop in that drive through and Nene is in the window, What's Nene's intent, for real? Like, come on. What's Nene's intent? Huh? She like, hair up and get your bag and go. You know what I'm saying? So you're eating food that contains intent that is adverse to your purpose and your growth and development. No, you right. Seriously, they don't care nothing about you, and you know that, and decide to commit to eating a thing that contains energy that don't care nothing about you. And then wonder why you start to break down, because you told yourself to break down. If you turn your computer off and get mad it's not working, why it won't, why it ain't working? Brother, you turned it off. Just, just hit the button again. And that's what we're doing when we're eating all this garbage. We're turning ourselves off. Then when we see the residual effects of us being turned off, we get mad. And then when we get mad, we sit with the disease. And then we sit around the cooler and we say, man, I just got my stomach cut. Man, that ain't nothing, man. I just got me an implant in my knee. Man, please, I got diabetes, man. I've been, should look at this right here. Man, that ain't nothing, man. I'm on chemotherapy. Look, all my hair's gone. And everybody just sits in a circle in a cipher about how much they're deteriorating. Something's not right here. We're alive. We love saying black power. We love saying, oh, we're black, we're better, we're royal, we're beautiful. Look at our skin and our hair and a nun and a nun and a nun and a nun. Well, our hair is not looking like it used to look, and neither is our skin. Huh? We're not glowing, we're not shining, we're not doing powerful things anymore. All that stuff is passing by. We're talking about what our ancestors was doing without actually doing what our ancestors were doing. So let me say something about tradition. That's such a fickle word. Because tradition, let me ask you, what is tradition? Can somebody tell me? Anybody? Oh, I got to pick somebody. That's how it's going to work. I want you right there fanning. Yeah, let me get you. Because you, you burning up about to let the answer out. I feel you. Tell me, what's tradition? again based on exactly it is our family's tradition to eat macaroni and cheese on thanksgiving my grandmother did it my great grandmother did it my great 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 grandmother did it but that don't mean great great grandmama was wrong great 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 grandmama could have been a crackhead we don't know we don't know what our ancestors was doing back then, because remember, they were young just like we were young, doing knucklehead stuff. But because it was 100 or 200 years ago, we just put it in this kind of sacred space and think that they were just skipping around, you know, with flowers in the meadow, doing everything perfect. And no, they was getting in trouble just like you was, learning day by day just like you were, and perhaps 
somebody else that wasn't in the family came and introduced macaroni and cheese and then they ate it and if they understood that the ingredient in cheese by the name of casein is synonymous with heroin I'm going to say that again. First of all, before I even talk about what's in cheese, let's all agree that cheese is rotten milk. Can we all agree on that? It's all, it's all rotten. So that already should tell you something. Like, how am I going to get anything, any energy from something that's spoiled and old? Okay? But the ingredient called casein is synonymous with heroin. It activates the same areas of the brain. This is why we grow up being drug addicts and looking for pharmaceutical handouts, because as a child, we are trained, programmed, and induced to become a drug addict. Who do they aim the got milk ad to? It ain't to us. It's to the kids. They put the little milk mustache under the, what is that? What is that thing? You got this big, strong dude standing there like, yeah, I'm, I'm strong. And with the mustache, I'm not going to take you seriously. I don't care if you got a gun. Like, wipe that off, man. <laughs> and then talk to me, you know? And they say, got milk, does a body good, strong for bones, when it does the exact opposite. It's acidic. Now, how does milk deteriorate the bone? Oh, it's real simple. Your blood is supposed to be somewhere between 7.3, 7.35, like in there somewhere. That's slightly alkaline. Y'all are familiar with alkaline and base, right? In here, hand, show hands, can I see some hands? Okay, good. So when you're eating poisons and toxins, your blood will become acidic. Its pH will drop exponentially. Now, if you got acidic blood, you're gonna die. So your body's like, look, it's 100 trillion of us. Just because you wanna be a fool don't mean we wanna be a fool. We've been working ever since you've been born, man. We ain't got a day off or nothing. You don't even give us checks no more. We just work it. pH drops down, gets real acidic. How do you buffer acidity in the blood? Calcium. Very good. Where's your calcium at? Right. So you got two little cells. One's called osteoclast, and the other one's called osteoblast. Osteoblast build bone. Osteoclast breaks bone down. So when your blood is acidic, Osteoclast goes on a rampage, breaking your bone down, releasing calcium ions so the blood can increase its pH again. But then you eat another burger. Drops. <laughs> releases ions. Comes back up. I'm good. Then I eat a pizza. And now it's acidic again. And then it goes and it breaks the bone down. And this cycle repeats from when you're 10 to when you're 15 to when you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70? Did you know you have two ages? Ah, you got a solar age and you got a biological age. Usually when people say how old you are, you usually tell them your solar age. But if for some reason you got in some freak accident and they doing an the autopsy on you the next day and they open that body up, guess how old the inside of that body might be? They're 25 years old, year olds walking around that are really 65 and 70. Do you understand? This is what we're dealing with. All right? So I crack jokes and I have fun because, you know, I, I start dealing with a lot of information. I don't want to make everybody go to sleep, so I, I keep it a little lively. But this is real serious. Like, it's passionate to me. I've been dealing with this my whole life, and I know what it is, okay? So let me ask you all a question. Why do we eat? Why? Why do we do it? Satisfaction. Satisfaction. To nourish your body, it's a habit to feel full. Great answers. Anybody else? Coping mechanism, yes. To live. All right, those are good, those are good. We can't get hunger confused with craving. 
We can't get hunger confused with craving. It's almost like getting love confused with lust. It's two different things. All right? The reason why we eat is to extract and to assimilate the energy of the sun. The reason why we eat is to extract and assimilate the energy of the sun. If you understand the reason why you eat, then you'll be a little bit more conscious about the decisions you make when you're eating. Because hunger and cravings are, are totally different. A craving deals with addiction. It deals with a fixation. I'm used to having ice cream at 2 o'clock in the morning after I watch my movie and I go to bed. That ain't hunger. That ain't what you need. That's just what you want. And we learn the difference of that when we're children and we go to our mothers and our fathers and they, they tell us the difference, even though they're doing the same thing, you know. But that's another story. So we, we eat to extract and assimilate the energy of the sun. So what is the sun? The sun is... Simply put, what is this? The sun is energy. But without you even knowing that word, what's the most simple word that describes the sun? What does it do when it rises? It gives us light. Light. Okay, so if I'm eating to extract and assimilate the energy of the sun, then that means the things that I'm eating must contain what? The energy and the light of the sun inside of it. Now, what is another way of saying light? Electrons. Electrons. Electricity. Power. Dr. Sebi always said, your body is electric. Electric foods. What did he mean? Well, hmm? Sun foods. What he was trying to say was, he, he was talking in code. It was like he didn't have much time, and he was talking to a large group of people, so he, can, he had to give it out in a way that you can get the basics of it and then take that information, dig deeper, and really pull the information out. So when he says the body is electric, what is electricity? Electricity is the conduction of electrons. Simply put, it's a current. If I got a copper wire and I induce a charge, that charge, that current will follow down that copper wire. That's currency. Our body is like that. So if, if, if I am to extract and assimilate the energy of the sun and my body is electric and the sun is light, then that means I need electrons. That's what I need. All your cells are negatively charged. What does that mean? That means that the food you eat need to be negatively charged. Now, when I say negatively charged, I don't mean bad. Okay, positive and negative does mean bad and good, but right now we're talking plus minus like science. North, south pole, like magnetism. You want to get electrons in you, so you have to look for the most electron-dense things because that's how you're going to get the power inside of your body. Okay? Once you make that decision, then you can start kind of like souping it up how you want, but that's where you start. So let me ask you. Right here, just killed me a nice little rabbit. Skinned him. All right? He laying here, skin, just the muscle, blood dripping on the floor. Right over here, I went out and picked a whole lot of fruit. And I'm lying because I didn't have to pick it because God is so wonderful that I don't have to do it. It just falls off the tree. Because this rabbit, when he saw me, he didn't say, hey, Kate. You know what I'm saying? That did not happen. I had to chase the rabbit and follow the rabbit and trap the rabbit and kill the rabbit and skin the rabbit. And now he's here dripping all over the floor. Okay. But like this, this drippy little rabbit with a fly start buzzing around. Is that what you want? Or would you rather the, the fruit that just fell? Because you can smell the fruit. It has a fragrance. Matter of fact, they both have a smell. What smell do you like? Are you sure? You don't want the dead corpse, you really? No. You want the, 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 the orange, the apple, the mango, the pineapple. Oh, what does that smell like, right? Okay, so I got the flesh and I got that. Okay. Energy of the sun. Okay, I'm looking at the two of them. I wonder which one has more life in it? That's a trick question. Is that a trick question? 
That has to be a trick question because it's already dead. <laughs> if it's dead, there's no life. If there's no life, there's no light. If there's no light, there's no electrons. Okay. But over here, it's still alive. Why? Because trees, I mean, fruit do not ripen and fall off the tree for us. Do you know why they fall off the tree? Anybody? To multiply. Yes, exactly. To seed. The juice, the sugar, the water, the oil, the colors of that fruit are there for the seeds that are inside. So when it hits the soil and it grounds itself, it has just enough nutrients to submerge inside that soil with the sun and the water so that that seed can germinate and the cycle can start again. Okay? It's not going to happen with that rabbit. Sorry. I don't think 10, 20 rabbits going to pop out of the ground after that thing laid there. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. I know it sounds silly. I know y'all laughing, but it's that simple. It's that simple. Now, we had a couple trees to choose from in Genesis. Did we not? We had a couple trees to choose from. Now, are we talking about a literal tree? Or are we talking about a phylogenetic tree? We are eukaryotes. That's the type of cells that make our body up. We multicellular. The other eukaryote is the plant. So you got plant eukaryote, you got animal eukaryote. Which eukaryote do you think you need in your body in order to sustain you? Which tree should you choose from the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom because when i find myself eating from the animal kingdom for some reason those cells look very familiar they almost look like my cells which means if i'm eating my cells they got a word for that what's that a little louder cannibalism wow wow so now now i'm eating myself See, we never think about things like this. We never think about eggs being a menstrual cycle. We, we never think about eggs being a menstrual cycle. I mean, they, last I checked, when a woman released the egg once a month, that's what they called it. When it didn't get fertilized, it, it, was, it was called a period. Hey, what? What you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to scramble a, with some cheese on? It gotta have a lot of electrons in it. It's an egg. <laughs> hey, like I said, we live in a society that offers constant distraction. Okay. So we never have a quiet moment to reflect, to properly observe our environment. We're too busy reacting. We're reactionary people. We're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be observant. Okay? Because if you're reactionary, the only thing I got to do is know what gets under your skin. I can, I can induce you to do whatever I want to do. But when I observe and I reason, then I can make real smart decisions. You see what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> now. Now, we, we say black power all the time, right? What, what's our colors as, as people? Well, yeah, we, we're brown, yeah. But like, what are the colors that? Red, black, and green, right? Everybody familiar with that? Do you agree with that? Is that your colors? I hope it is, right? <laughs> I'm going to show you just how much is your colors. Huh? Because everything we do is on many levels. So if anybody tries to come to check us, we got it. We got it locked and sealed. Okay? Now, for anybody who's like, yo, I thought there was going to be some food here. I didn't know he was going to be talking about food. Where the food at? 
like I mentioned earlier, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I, I hear him back there. They texting each other in the back row like this guy just think he going to be slick. Not gonna. But no, like I said, it takes time and the food is almost done. It's going to come. Y'all going to get the whiff. Y'all going to go crazy. It's on the way. It's right upstairs. Okay. But I had to come down here and talk to y'all because y'all came out and everything. And I got to we got to connect and see why it's so important. The work I did in regards to preparing this food, because if I don't say any of this, and it's just, oh, man, yeah, OK, yeah, it looks good. Okay. Oh, that does taste good. And that's it. But if I'm able to give you this information, then when the food comes in front of you, you'll be like, oh, yes, that's what I want. All right. So. Yes. Oh, we are we are reactionary people. We're supposed to be more observant. OK, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Mm. When we're reactionary, that means anybody can manipulate our actions based on inducing an emotional response. If I know she blows up over any little thing and I want to get her like in trouble or something, then I just do some little she blow up and then she gets in trouble because she's reactionary. And that's how we are. We see it when our people are shot on the news, they, it's done on purpose so that we can react and they can say, oh, that's how they react. Okay, bet, let's log that down, let's keep it moving. You see what I'm saying? Red, black, and green. Now, what is something we all have in common as a people? There's a few things. We're, we would obviously say the blood. What makes the blood so important? Breeze life. What gives it its color? Oxygen, but oxygen bound to what? Iron and iron inside of what? Starts with an H. Talked about it earlier. Hemoglobin. Ah, yes, 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 hemoglobin. And I don't have a, I wish I would tell you about a, a, a board I would have wrote on it. The hemoglobin has a specific structure. It kind of looks like a flower. And at the center of it, you'll find the iron. Okay? When that iron binds to oxygen, it gets this scarlet red color. Okay? Flowing around your body. Now, what also connects us on the surface? What we got right here? What's in the skin? Ah, oh, black. All colors, right? Because it absorbs every color in the rainbow. That's why it's black. Green. Where do we find green? Nature. But what is it in the green that we need? Chlorophyll. Now, what if I told you that the chlorophyll molecular structure is exactly the same as the hemoglobin molecular structure, except for chlorophyll has magnesium and hemoglobin got iron. And melanin has the structure as the two of them as well. They're called porphyrin rings. And these porphyrin rings, right, are light bodies. They're pigments. They're there to absorb light. So wait a minute. So, so I was always told with red, black, and green that red meant the blood of my people, black meant my people, and green meant the land. And wow, it also talks about how I'm supposed to live my life as well. Because the more chlorophyll you eat, the more pure, pure your blood becomes, the more red it is, right? And the more the melanin will be able to transmit the energy of the sun to make sure that your health stays on an optimum level. Right there on the flag. So whenever you forget and you about to buy that steak, you better RBG that thing right away. <laughs> right away. Did y'all know that meat is really gray and green? Flesh in the supermarkets is really gray and green because when you butcher meat, you have to drain the blood. So why is it red and juicy if the blood's... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute, you butchered this, you, you drained the blood, but I bought it and I see all the red stuff. And it looks so fresh. Well, I just told you when oxygen binds with hemoglobin, it makes it scarlet red. When carbon monoxide binds with hemoglobin, it gets even brighter. This is why carbon monoxide poisoning is so deadly because your hemoglobin has a greater affinity for carbon monoxide than it does oxygen. So if carbon monoxide is present, it's going to choose that over the oxygen. It's going to occupy the oxygen space. You'll suffocate. You'll die. So they actually gas the myoglobin protein inside of the meat with carbon dioxide, which makes the myoglobin turn a bright red color. So you're, you're eating carbon monoxide. Okay? Not just that, most steaks that you get are really a collection of about 30 different cows. Because they have a chemical called transglutaminase, known as meat glue. She know what I'm talking about. And it, it puts all of post-mortem meat together as one piece. They gas it up. They wrap it up. And you think you're eating one slice of one cow that was just killed a week ago. But you're eating 30 cows from three weeks ago bathed in ammonia. Where are the electrons at and all of this again? We're so far gone. But see, this lets you know how strong your genetic stock is because if I was to take a sledgehammer and go to your new bins and just go ape on it, more than likely your car will be trashed. But when we do that to ourselves, for some reason, we can still smile. We can still operate in our life because our body just has faith in us like that. It's like, he's, he's going to come around. Let's just, let's just keep him going a little, a little further. We have to stop, y'all, because what we're doing is we're destroying our future. Because the more you beat your body up, the more you beat your seed up. And then when your seed meets her egg, then you got a beat up child. And then you feed your child Cheetos and macaroni and cheese. You don't have no school to take them to. There's nobody to look up to in society. And then you wonder why he's wilding out on Instagram and Snapchat. It's not his fault. It's the environment that was given to him. It's his birthright. I know it's hard to think about it that way. Like society's his birthright? No, it is. And we so caught up trying to catch up, we don't think of how much we're impacting the youth. And they're like, they're buzzing. They're ready. These are the indigo. These are the crystal children that are ready to run the world, rule the world. But we're not giving them anything substantial to do. But other people are. They're giving them video games, and they're giving them football and sports and all this other stuff to distract them from what is supposed to go down in their heart. All right? So we got to make changes, not just for ourselves, but for our future, or else we up out of here. Okay? It's, it's like it's a threshold that we have. All right, so I got my, I got my burners up here. I got some food up here, too. All right, so we got some, we got some collard greens there. We got some onions here, and we got some more stuff coming down shortly. All right, how y'all doing? Y'all learning anything today? You sure? I don't want to be wasting my time or anything up here. You know, y'all got better things to do. You know. All right, so electrons, right? So let's go into the cell. You're made up of 100 trillion cells. Did you know that? 100 trillion? If you had a dollar for every cell, huh? Now you're paying attention, right? 100 trillion. It, you, do you know that you, you can't even live long enough to count to that number? Like, that's how big it is. But that's who you are in, what, five and a half to six feet? You contain 100 trillion mini U's. Now, the same way that your body has a system of organs, right? 
your cells, if they are many you, they got to have organs as well. And those organs are called organelles. And out of those organelles, there's one in particular that just like takes the cake. And the name of that organelle is called, anybody? Yeah, I heard it. Mitochondria. Can you please give it up to the sister? Come on, man. When people give these answers, you got to support each other. Okay? So if y'all don't got a pen and a pad or a little, little tape recorder or something like that, you should. Mitochondria. It is known as the powerhouse of the cell. What makes it so important is the fact that it has its own genome. It has its own genome, which means it's not an organelle. It's a cell. It's its own cell that only can be passed down matrilineally, maternally. Wait a minute, KT. So you telling me I get all my power from my mama? Yeah, because that's the only person that can pick up a car when their baby's trapped underneath. I don't know if brothers could do that. We'd be like, hey, bro, can you come help me, man? One, two, three, you know? A mama, she, man, get up here. How you just going to fall under that car like that? Y'all just, y'all just pull it from somewhere. I don't know where y'all get it from, but y'all just got it. But what you say? From my other mom, from my mama, mama. So we live on Mother Earth, okay? And the mitochondria lives inside our cell like our cell is Earth. And the mitochondria itself has its own DNA, so it could replicate, it could divide. But what's most important is it is what creates our power and our energy. Okay. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, okay? This is a nucleotide. It is a nitrogenous base by the name of adenine. It is a sugar called ribose sugar, and it's three phosphate groups attached. This is a nucleotide. And when you break one phosphate off, energy is released, and it drives functions. And this molecule is created in the mitochondria. How is it created? You would think by eating its minerals and da 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 No. What if I told you the only thing that you need to drive your system is hydrogen? Did y'all know that? That's all, you, that's all you need. All you need is hydrogen. What other powerful body do you know of that just uses hydrogen? Water. Think about it now. It's burning in the sky. The sun ain't nothing but hydrogen. That's all we use in order to power our body. How does that happen? Hydrogen atom. What is the atom composed of, y'all? Come on now. Electrolytes? What is a hydrogen atom composed? What are the parts of a hydrogen atom? Come on, somebody. Here we go. Come on up here. Come, come, come. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Come on. You got Africa on and everything. Youth, come on. Give it up. Give it up. What's your name? Say again. Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Everybody say, what's up, Hezekiah? Can I get can I get some parts to, to the hydrogen atom? Electron. Yes. What else we got? We have protons, protons. neutrons. Say, say them, say all three real loud. Electrons, protons, and neutrons. The future. Come on. I asked y'all. I asked y'all. Y'all looking at me like I don't know water. So yes, these are basic things we need to know. And I'm not saying y'all don't know it. Y'all probably just like, I'm not about to say it out loud just because you asked me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but nah, electron, proton, neutron, they each have a charge, plus, minus, neutral. What's another way of explaining that? Oh, I got a judge. I got a plaintiff and a defendant, right? Supposed to be someone, supposed to be someone unbiased as the judge, and you got a positive point, and you got a negative point. It's the same thing, okay? Now, what happens in our mitochondria is, we end up taking that hydrogen atom, we split the atom. 
which, if anybody knows anything about science, it takes millions of dollars and a lot of energy in order to do that. But we do it without even thinking about it every second that passes by. The electron is channeled and connected with oxygen and becomes water. So yes, mitochondria makes water in your body. You are a water plant. You are a water generator. And then the byproduct of that is the ATP being formed as well. Okay? So that means that if we're choosing to eat foods, we need to keep in mind the mitochondria. Because as long as our mitochondria stays healthy, we're going to stay healthy. Y'all looking at me like, so who cares? I'm going to say that again. If you really want to be on top of your health, focus on the mitochondria, okay? Because every other disease, problem, issue that you're dealing with has to deal with the fact that your mitochondria is suffering. It's not getting a proper amount of oxygen. It's not getting the things that it needs, so it starts to break down. When mitochondria recognizes that there's problems going on in the area, they do something called apoptosis, which is called cell death. So people who have cancer and their cells are dying, mitochondria are the ones that kill the cells. Anytime cells are destroyed, it's the mitochondria that do it because it is taking on so much stress. It's like, yo, I can't deal with this. What do women do when that happens? Don't y'all do that? If it's too much going on, you man, I, I can't put up with this. I'm done. I'm out of here, right? Same thing inside the body. So what do you do to a woman when she's like that? You're like, baby, baby, wait, 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 I'm sorry, 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 sorry. What, what do you need? What do you need? You don't know what I need? You know what I need. You know what you're right. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm sorry. You got to do that to your body. Don't ask your body what it need. You know what it need. It need the fruit. It don't need the drippy rabbit. Okay? So, um... If I give any advice to y'all today, y'all need to get more familiar with yourselves. Like, know thyself don't just mean your personality. That's just how you integrate with society. But you're still you if you're alone on an island. Okay? So you need to know who you are inside. This is the highest technology that exists in the universe. Ain't nothing better. You know? You know how I could prove that? The only reason why I'm here... It's so God can express himself. Whoa. Wait a minute. The only reason why I'm here is so the creator can express himself, because he, he don't know nothing about emotions and getting jealous. I mean, people do talk about jealous gods, but I, I've never understood that. What is he jealous of? I'm like, didn't you create everything? You even created emotions. Can't you just create that emotion that's not jealousy and feel different? I don't know. But we're the way for him to see. We're his, we're his eyes. We're his experience. Her experience. Okay? Yeah. That's why we're here. So it's like, if we know we're the highest technology, like highest technology to people's minds is like iPhone 9 and a half. You know? A MacBook 10. You know, maybe a retinal scan safe. Like, that's our idea of technology. All that stuff is based on you. And when you take care of your body, when you give your body the proper fuel, the light, the energy, the patience, the love, it will perform just like any other high-performance technology would. But eons, eons ahead. But you have to take the time to show yourself appreciation. Pat yourself on the back from time to time. Okay? Because if you don't, you'll choke. All right. So we about to get started with some stuff. So... Let's see what we got here. Oh boy, we got the noodles going. We got these pots. We got the green beans. All right. Now, I'm gonna start with the collard green. Where's my green beans at? Is green beans coming? She needs to bring the green beans down. I don't think she brought the green beans down. I can put this down. I can put it down. I thought it was like one for recording and one for everybody else. All right. There we go. Can y'all still hear me good? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So 
We got these green beans coming up here. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so. Green beans, right? Now it's like, okay, I've had green beans before, they cool, but that ain't about to replace no chicken leg, bruh, you know? <laughs> She's about to show me how to make green, I know how to make green beans. All right, so what I wanna do is kinda give you an idea of the nutritional density that's in everyday things. Like I could talk to you about herbs that are in the rainforest and stuff like that, that you're not able to get a touch on or handle on or don't understand. I wanna give you all information in your immediate area. This is Greenville, South Carolina. Y'all have wonderful soil. You are on the foothills of the mountains, okay? You can grow anything you want down here. And y'all growing time is, is long. It's like from pretty much the last week of February all the way to like mid-November or something like that. Like that's all year, okay? And I wanna be able to tell you about basic things that you can grow or you can find at your farmer's markets, all right? that you can incorporate into your everyday life. Because it's like, okay, what do I eat? If I'm gonna go plant-based, or even if I'm gonna incorporate more plant-based options into my regimens, what am I going to cook? So I wanna give y'all things simple and basic that is just delicious, all right? Green beans, very high in vitamin C. Okay, vitamin C is ascorbate. You need vitamin C and you need iron in order to regenerate. And it's an antioxidant. And what do I mean by that? Well, that mitochondria, when it gets too stressed, it starts releasing something called reactive oxygen species. You know them as free radicals. All right? What is, what is so crazy about a free radical? A free radical, I mean, he, he's free. You're, you're, you're in a hundred trillion uh, government. Like, this is a country. This is a people. This is a nation. So anybody who's a free radical isn't part of the nation. He wants to do his own thing. You don't want nobody doing that. You want everybody to be in work and order. Like, dude, no, I need my pinky. Like, you gonna make my pinky start twitching. Like, no, I don't want that. I gotta grab stuff. So you want everything working um, um, holistically, all right? And that's what a score bait is for, all right? Now, people might say, well, I could just go get some emergency from CVS. Like, that's vitamin C, right? No. The thing about a plant, think about that word. What else do you, where, where else do you hear the word plant? Now I got me an echo, I probably gotta turn it down. Where else do y'all hear the word plant? A little louder, let me hear that a little louder on that. Manufacturing plant, how about a nuclear power? Why do they name it a plant? Because it produces. It takes what, unrefined, resources and refines them so that you and I can use it. That's what plants do. Plants have roots that go deep into the earth. They pull up unrefined minerals. And once it gets inside of here, it gets charged. It gets turned into a way that you can assimilate and put in your body so you can be the technology. That's what makes technology technology is minerals. What makes your iPhone work? What's, what's one of the main ingredients of your iPhone? Do y'all know? Gold is in it. That's not the main one. Coltan. Coltan, which is uh, nio, niobium and tantalum mixed together. It's harvested in the Congo by young man with the glass. What's your name? Demarcus. How old are you? Ten. Okay, how would y'all feel if somebody came and grabbed Demarcus and made him start mining coltan? that's 10 feet down in the earth for 12 to 15 hours a day. And if they find any coltan in his pockets, just chop his hands off. That's how the iPhones work. Because of DeMarcus. Because DeMarcus works a nine to 18 job. Eight days a week, 25 hours a day. Yeah, so we could look at, you know, retina display. That's the reason why technology works the way it was because of the minerals in the earth. And the plants are the ones that do it. 
So this green bean right here, besides having a vitamin C, which I said you don't want to isolate anything from plant because when it's in a plant, it's work, it's a symphony. Who's going to go to the Philharmonic and isolate 300 instruments just to listen to the violin? Who's going to do that? Who's going to leave out the Philharmonic and be like, oh, that was wonderful, man, but did you hear the cello? Like, no, nobody's going to pick no instrument out of a symphony. It's the fact that they're all working together harmoniously, melodiously to give you this experience. That's what plants are. It's music. OK. Another powerful ingredient inside this green bean is silica. OK. You see silica every day you on the beach when you're walking in the sand. If you're wearing glasses, your glass was made from silica. Our skin, our hair, our nails are all silica. Water is what creates life. Silica is what allows water to be animated. Because water can go all directions but one direction. What is that one direction water can go? Up. Unless silica and sun is involved, then it can. There's footage that I have um, of water that gets up and turns around and stretches because silica's in it, OK? So this is really what your skeleton is made out of in your body. It's really silica that does that, OK? And it's inside of these green beans as well, all right? Um, you also got pigments. You got beta carotene up in here. You got anthocyanins. And it's like, how? It's green. But if you cook green beans down, you notice you get like an orange kind of brown like gravy in there. Those are those colors coming out, OK? And we need those colors because the colors help our pigments. The colors help our vision because, like I said, food is secondary. Sun is primary. Light feeds us. It's the vision. That's why they have TVs and all this stuff so you can constantly be doing this on that. But if you get up early in the morning when the sun rises and it's red, and you sun gaze for a good like five to ten seconds. You just look at the sun when it's like red and bright and scarlet. Man, that'll charge your whole day. You won't need a five hour energy drink. What does a bottle of five hour energy drink compare to the sun? That thing feed everybody. Don't discriminate. OK. All right. So with these green beans, put this down here. Um, Let's see where we are with it. All right, so I need some olive oil. Here we go. All right, so olive oil. I use olive oil. Um, olive oil, most oils have a burn index. Um, the highest burn index is usually grapeseed oil and avocado oil. I use olive. I just make sure I don't, like, burn it, OK? Now, I'm doing a hot plate up here, so y'all got to bear with me. You know, I'm used to, like, gas stove and being in the kitchen and everything like that, so I got to make sure what the temperature is like with these hot plates. But um, use the olive oil, put the olive oil in the pan um, just to warm it up. And then after I, I warm it up, I put some onions in. Now, I got a combination of Vidalia and red. And I'm doing the red because the red got this color. Look at that, you know? Red uh, onions have a lot of chromium, and chromium is good for your eyesight, and chromium is also good for your pancreas. Okay, what's your pancreas for, y'all? Insulin. Also, lipase, which is the enzyme you use to break your fats down. Okay. So I put the oil in the pan, just enough to cover the bottom. All right, and I want to get it warm. off that okay good all right so that's going to warm up as that starts to warm up the next step is I'm just going to put some onions in there all right I know y'all like man I haven't sauteed before what you doing put these in there and it's going to start to sweat all right meaning the water is going to start coming out of the onion onions got sugars in there that's why you're able to caramelize onions that's usually the best tasting when they cook down they get all brown and dark and everything they got a real deep flavor. That's glutamate coming out, all right? So once I put, I always put one in. That always lets me know whether the oil's hot or not, you 
you know, because you don't want to touch oil, obviously. You don't want to throw no water to see it pop. So you just put something small in there. You put a little spice. You put an onion. You put a bell pepper. It's just something that's going to show, oh, it's starting to pop. So that means the oil's hot. So then after I do that, I let it, like I said, I let it cook there. I let it sweat a little bit. It starts getting translucent. You got transparent. You got translucent. You got opaque. Transparent is like see-through, glass. Light passes right through it. Opaque, no light passes. It's like that wall right there. Okay. Translucent though is in between. That's like when you go to one of the government offices, and they behind the counter, and you just see their outline, and they be like, "Next." Yeah, that's translucent window <laughs> right there. Okay. So I wait till they get translucent, and then I take a heap of the green beans and I just sit them right on top. And what it does is it creates kind of like a, a, a mesh, so it kind of traps the steam and the water that's coming from the onions as it's cooking and recycles that so that the onions start to caramelize on their own, so it acts like a top. Once they caramelize, I start mixing the green beans around, and then all of it starts to cook, and then I want these to start to cook down and get a little caramelized as well. Um, once that happens, I add some vegetable broth to it, fill it up to the top, and I let it just cook down, cook down, cook down, cook down, and reduce. Um, and I think it's up in the fridge, but there's a plant-based butter called Earth Balance. I add a little bit of that in there, and when it cooks down, it's a gravy, and it's real nice. So I'm just waiting on this to... That ain't even... That might be why that's not working there. I know it wasn't me. All right. It's plugged up. Let's see if this one is going to do better. But just to show you what I mean, that's one of the things I did. But just so you know, that's what it comes out to. All right. And it got this real deep, like, orange gravy. They're nice and soft, so it's not, you know, just this crunchy bean with no flavor. It's deep, it's rich, and it's full of flavor. Um, yeah, I just turned this one on to see whether or not it was coming. Oh, wait. Is this doing something now? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. All right, just bear with us, folks. You know how it goes with the technology. Need something to sit this in. I guess I'll sit it in this right here. All right. So while that's getting to go, I'll just talk about it a little more. So once again, oh yes. I have a question yes, about sir. the green beans. Um, I've heard that especially if you are diabetic, mm -hmm. to eat uh, raw green beans because it turns into a natural insulin. Mm. Talk about that. Powerful. Powerful. All right. So diabetes, let's talk about diabetes real quick so we can understand. Diabetes really doesn't have anything to do with the pancreas and insulin, believe it or not. Diabetes got everything to do with the mitochondria. Like I said, everything's going to go back to this organelle. If you address this one organelle and keep, if you, come on, brothers. Brothers, they all in the room? What happens when you keep your girl happy, man? What's your name? What's your name, Baba? What's your name? Alfonso Daniel. You are an Alfonso. <laughs> Elder in the room said it best. And y'all women, do y'all agree with what he just said? If he's taking care, you're going to do everything in your power to make sure he's good, right? So I'm telling you, your mitochondria is your woman. It is your mama inside. You take care of her, everything else is going to be straight. All right? Now, just to, just, just to not sidestep what your question is for those that are aware of the connection between pancreas and insulin, diabetes is a matter of communication. And what do I mean? All right, I'm going to go ahead and... Let me get somebody a call real quick. Oh, man, wait a minute. I don't seem to have a signal. 
wait a minute, I got intention to call. I know what I want to say, but I just can't reach them because I have no signal. Okay, let me try, let me try somebody else. That's exactly why. <laughs> Wait a minute, they must not have a signal because they're not picking up. That's diabetes. Let me go a little deeper. You have your pancreas, which is a, it's an endocrine and exocrine gland. Endocrine meaning that it can put things into the bloodstream because that's inside your body and also it could put things inside your digestive system, which is outside your body. Your digestive system is not inside. You're a tube, you're a donut. So your digestive system is relatively still outside. Does that make any sense? No? If I gave you a donut, is the hole inside? Or do you have to stick your finger in the donut to get inside the donut? Do you have to break the skin and get inside? That's how you get in the donut. If I stuck my finger through a hole of a donut, I'm not in the donut. It's still outside. That's what your digestive system is. It's just a tube. It's a hole. Okay, we got something crackalack in here. All right, let me move that out the way and bring this down a little bit and put some onions in here. I'm still on your question. Just don't want to burn up here. That look real bad for me. All right, so it's an endocrine and exocrine gland. Endocrine being in the blood, exocrine being in the digestive system. The endocrine functions, is it putting either insulin, glucagon, or somatostatin in your blood? If it's exocrine, it's dealing with uh, pancreatic lipase and other chemicals that help to digest foods. Now, in the islets of Langerhans inside of your pancreas, you find alpha cells, beta cells, and delta cells. The, the beta cells are the cells that produce the insulin. Insulin is a signal. What signal? It's a signal to notify your cells that there's glucose in the bloodstream, so open up the doors and let them in. Okay? If you're standing in line outside of a club, and you left your ID at home, and you don't got no money. Yeah, that's that water. And you don't got no money. That bouncer is not going to let you up in there unless you got some hookup, somebody's name. You got to have something to give them to let them up in there. And that's what insulin is. Insulin is a signal that lets the cell know, open up your doors, you can let the sugar in so that it can get where? Mitochondria. That's where the citric acid cycle is. That's where all your energy processes and your metabolism is inside the mitochondria. All right? Now, once the insulin goes through the bloodstream, what did I say? It's going to connect the receptor sites on the cell membrane, and that's going to let the sugar in. So you have two areas where problems can occur, okay? One area problems can occur is at the site where the insulin has left from, from the beta cells. So if that gets compromised, no signal can leave. So how are your cell going to know there's sugar in the blood if they don't get no signal? How do you know that your man just caught the winning touchdown, huh, if something happened at the station and the signal couldn't go out? You're going to see nothing but snow on your, on your TV screen. You'll never know what happened, right? So that's diabetes 1. Diabetes 1 is at the source and the site of where the insulin is produced at in the beta cells. And that is compromised by way of autoimmune disease. Your own white blood cells start consuming. You start eating yourself. And you're eating yourself because you're covered in all this sugar. You're candy coated. So your white blood cells is like, oh, man, it's candy coating over here. And they start seeing how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll pot. And before you know it, they're one, a two, a three, and they bite. And you got like shrunken, minuscule beta cells that emit a very weak signal that's not strong enough where your cells like, huh? Say it again. I didn't hear you. So that's diabetes one. Diabetes 2 is at the site of the cell on the receptor site. So if I come over to your house, uh, what's his name? Floyd Mayweather doing his, he's trying to go for what, 51? Or oh, he's going for 50. I think he had 49 right now. And he's about to do the last hit and lightning come and hit your satellite dish. No more fight. So it's the same thing with the receptor sites on your cellular membrane. You compromise the receptor sites, insulin has nothing to bind to, there's no way of letting the cell know there's sugar outside. 
So you constantly have large quantities of sugar cycling through your blood. And if I put sugar in water on a 100 degree flame, what do I have? And we in the South. Y'all should know when y'all make y'all lemonade. What you get when you, when you boil some salt? I mean, boil some sugar in some water. Syrup. Syrup. So now, if you got syrupy blood, you change the viscosity, which is the density. So now who got to work harder? OK? So what the brother was just saying, which is news to me, so I appreciate the addition. That's why I love doing things like this, because I learned just like y'all learned. He said, eating a raw string bean is like replacing insulin inside your body. Now, the way that I can see how that works is insulin ain't nothing but a molecule, a real complex molecule. This is a real complex molecule, too. So if you chew this up, you digest it, what you extract from it, that's what's going to end up happening. All right, we got some stuff happening over here, y'all. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. They starting to get, you see, they're going to get, they're starting to get a little translucent, a little limp. All right. Now you can use coconut oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil. You can use different oils. Olive oil is just my preference. You know, it's what I came up on. I just like olive oil. But um, it depends on what I'm cooking, too. If I'm cooking some Indian foods, I might use coconut oil, you know, because it adds the flavor to a lot of the stuff. But with this right here, I'm doing olive. Don't do vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is soy. Soybeans. Why are soybeans bad for everybody, y'all? Why don't you want to eat soy? Anybody? Yes, increases hormones. And that's cool, right? We need hormones. But I don't need your hormones, and you don't need mine, right? Like, if I had your hormones, I might be a little bit more feminine. If you had my hormones, you might be walking around here like, ugh. <laughs> and that's what soybean do. And women who eat it get more androgens, testosterone level go up. They start getting a little bit more aggressive. When I say aggressive, I'm not saying y'all supposed to be tamed and quiet. I'm just saying. Like, y'all be like, buck, you know? And, like, other things start happening in your body that you don't really like because you're a lady, you know? And then with men, they become more effeminated and passive. And then the women come to them like, baby, we got to do something about it. And you like, huh. <laughs> Check the ingredients of half the stuff you eat. There's either soy lecithin, soybean oil, soy flour. That's why we ain't gangster no more. That's why we ain't running up in the White House like, bow, fucker. You know, we ain't doing stuff like that no more. We're, we're a little bit more laid back with it. You know, we got some soy in us, you know? So, like, chill on the soy. So that's one thing. The other problem is the fact that it turns your digestive off. Okay? It's called trypsin inhibition. Okay? Trypsin is an enzyme that you utilize in order to what? To break your food down and digestion, specifically your protein. If you inhibit your protein, if you inhibit trypsin, then you inhibit the breaking down of them, and now you have these big clunky proteins floating around in your intestines you didn't break down, and that just wreaks havoc in the body. That's what soybeans do, all right? So you don't want to deal with the soy. So with vegetable oil, canola oil, that's like, a lot of that is GMO. And I don't like canola oil because I don't like what it's called. Y'all know what canola oil is really called? Who said that? Yeah, say that again. Rape seed. That's why they don't got it on the label. Would you buy it? Yeah, I'm about to fry this up with some of that rape seed oil. That's right. That's exactly right. So. I deal with other types of oil, like I said, I deal with olive oil, almond, you got almond, you got avocado, you got mac, you got all types of oils out there, but usually the top is grapeseed, avocado, um, safflower is cool, safflower and sunflower is cool, 
for like deep frying, huh? Sesame's good, but sesame's strong. So sesame's more of an additive. Because if you do too much of that, it's like, it's, whew, it'll take over. What's that? Hemp seed? Oh, yeah. Well, hemp seed oil, I don't even really like cook with. That thing is so powerful, you could just take it as a, I don't want to say supplement, but as a meal. Like, you could eat that stuff. So you see, I'm just dropping these right on top. I didn't season anything yet. I didn't season anything yet. So here we go. Just going to put these right on top. Right on top of here. And what that's going to do is going to create a nice little mesh work. All right, and as you see, the steam's coming up, but it's going to get trapped by all these beans, and it's going to cycle underneath the beans and caramelize the onions. And then once that happens, the beans are going to drop because the onions caramelize and they're soft now. So when they drop down, then I mix them. And then when the beans mix in and they touch the bottom of the pan, they start to caramelize and get cooked. And then once they get soft and they get a little brown on them and the, the onions are real limp too, then I add the vegetable broth all the way to the top and then let it reduce down. And it creates a gravy. And it also makes the beans softer and pulls all this nutrients out. And then it's just this little party going on. All right? So we're going to have that go. This is hot too. Cool. Um, do I have another pan? I guess I could do it with this. One. All right, now this pot is a little thin, and um, I'm going to do my best not to burn nothing up here. That's going to look real, real bad. Let's turn it down a little bit first. So with this, I'm going to start the collards up. I got a reputation for my collard greens across the country because everybody's like, man, I know you vegan, but you can tell me. I know you put some up in there. What you putting in there? What, what you putting in there? And I'm like, I ain't putting no, there ain't no animals and there ain't no meat in there. They're like, listen, KT, KT, I know you vegan, but what you putting in there? So I'm about to show you. It's real simple. What happens? It's like you have to really believe that these plants have flavor inside. And salt, pepper, all they're there to do is to bring more flavors out. Um, the, the first like act of commerce that existed on the planet was what? What was the first trade? Huh? Spice trade. We traded spices. Why? What's another word for spice? In the store, either you're going to see the spice aisle or the seasoning aisle. What's the root word in that? And it's not because they represent herbs that come out of different seasons, but when you take those particular plants, they manipulate the seasons of your body. Okay? If I gave you a mint leaf, what happens in your mouth? Mint, mint leaf. What, what sensation do you get if you inhale, start to breathe? Say that louder, y'all. Cool. Right? If I give you some pepper, what happens? Right? If I hit you with the cinnamon challenge, tell you to eat a spoon, can you hold it down? Can you do it? Nobody can. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. What is that feeling? Dry. Super dry. No moisture. Okay? And then you have things that you take and you just start salivating, like everywhere, you know? So seasonings and spices manipulate the seasons in your body. And based on the combinations that you add to your food, you create a certain type of environment in there. Okay? All right. So we got, we got it, we got it going. I know I'm not going to finish I know I'm not going to finish this by the time. I'm just getting it started, and I'm going to show y'all what the end result is like they do on, on the TV shows. All right. Um, so with this, I got onions, and I got some red pepper flakes, speaking of, of hot, right? And this is so easy, y'all. People think I do something special. I'm like, yeah, I put some love in it. 
I put some love in it, but you got love too, don't you? Yeah, I know, right? They just was quiet on that one. All right, all right. So let's got some oil in there. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of red pepper flakes. Not a lot, just a little bit. And once this gets hot, I'll add a bunch of these onions. When I do these, I, I cut them up more in chunks. And I do rings with that. Um, I don't have like a metaphysical reason for it. It just cooks better in my opinion. Um, so once the oil gets hot, I put the pepper in, I put the onions in there, I put a little bit of garlic in there, and then I let it kind of just do its thing, get translucent like here. And once I do that, I grab a heat full of the collard greens and I drop them in the pan. And the reason why I'm doing that is kind of get the flavor into the green and also to start breaking the leaf down because it's very, very tough. The fiber level is very, very high. So I want to start breaking it down. Um, after I do that and I get all of that wilted down, then vegetable broth or water, you can do either one, fill it all the way up to the top, cover it, and I let it cook for like 45 minutes, an hour of boiling. So it could break down, break down, break down, break down. Once it breaks, it starts breaking down, I take the lid off so it can start to reduce. And as the water starts to go down and the leaf is getting more, more and more tender, that's when I start adding all the spices and the flavors to it. Okay, what you gonna give them? Okay, cool. We got some sample. Y'all want something to eat? Okay. Yes. God. We've been listening to you. We've done our part. Can I eat something now? All right. So this is starting up too. All right. So we're going to have some samples going to get passed around very shortly. My queen, Larie, in the black and white dress you see walking around. She's going to come around with some of the runners and pass out some of this food so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully I know what I'm talking about, huh? <laughs> so this is your best friend. This is my best friend. Yes. Yes. Huh? What's this right here? Uh, Aminos. Yes. It's mine. No. It's a soya sauce replacement. Okay? I can't say don't eat no soy and then come up here with a, 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 a big bottle of soy sauce, right? But no, there's a lot of recipes that call for soy sauce because soy sauce has this like real caramelizing effect. Like when you add it to certain things, it really gives a deep richness because it too has large quantities of glutamate in it. That's what it is. So this is called coconut aminos. And what it is, huh? You can buy this at the at natural stores. I got this at Whole Foods. Earth Fair has it. Earth Fair has it as well. Trader Joe's might have it too. Um, no, not here. Okay, but I know Whole Foods here because it's where I got it from. Um, and what it is, it's the nectar of the coconut flower. It's coconut flower nectar, and the coconut flower nectar. Um, they end up, they can either do it granulated, so you can replace your white sugars and your brown sugars with coconut crystals, okay? Because sometimes, you know, when you're making, uh, you're baking something or you're cooking something, you need, a, you need a crystal sugar. You can't always use like an agave or maple syrup or honey. You need something that's crystal, and the coconut provides that. So this is the liquid version of it, um, and it has, you know, some, some salt, yeah some sun-dried mineral-rich sea salt in there, and it gives you the same um, thing that soya sauce would. They have a teriyaki, they have a garlic sauce, they even have um, maple syrup. They got a coconut nectar, where you can use as a maple syrup too on pancakes, you know. So this is all about transitions. This is all about not just telling you what y'all need to stop eating, but letting you know, okay, stop eating this because this is available. I do vegan macaroni and cheese. 
yo, it's over. It's over. Look, say, we need some of that. No, y'all got to bring me back for that. Y'all got to bring me back. But no, I got, I got what I'm making. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They have who? Oh yeah, they do have a vinegar. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of vinegar. That's something you got to use sparingly because it's it breaks down. You know? How is it? Did you taste it? Oh. Yes. Oh no, it gets too hot because of the pot. It the pot's too okay. thin. Mm -hmm. But I'll turn this one up though. This one probably can go up a little bit more. Turn that up some. All right, so these onions got a little softer. So I'm just going to grab some of these collards. I'm going to just drop them right in the pot. OK? I'm not going to put all of them in there, obviously, because I want to wilt them a little bit at a time. Let that cook. Look what I did already, though. Right on there. Oh, so cook, cookbook, cookbook is in the making, and the reason why it's in the making is I'm constantly cooking, and I constantly have new meals. So I'm like, oh no, I gotta add this one. I got to put this in it, you know, and then pictures and description and steps. So, yes, I'm working on it. Yes. Do I have business call? Yeah, I got, con I got contact info. I got website. I got email. But I wasn't just going to come up here and say, yeah, buy my product, everybody. Bye. <laughs> I got to give you something. But I have products up here on this table that I'm going to address shortly. But um, what's going on over there? What's happening? Delicious. I got any more adjectives in the audience yet? Excellent. Excellent. Oh, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Look at that. I love that. That chuckle with the smile. You're trying to hold it down and can't do it. What's going on? Oh, not the. Which one? Oh, the camera, that one right there on the chair, yeah. What's going on, y'all? What's happening out there?
You said for the college? Yeah. I'll go back over it. Okay. Once it gets quiet, I'll go back over it. Did everybody get some? Don't start. No. We out of bowls. We get ready. We waiting on them to come down. If I if I don't, just remind me. Okay. It's funny what good food does. Like nobody is ain't nobody's angry when they eat good food. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna see one person flip a bird at another guy because his food tastes good. You know? He's like, come on, bring it. We we waiting on the trays. It's coming. We looking on. How we looking on time? It's four twenty. Three twenty. Okay. How much time? How much time do I have? Three eighteen. How much time I got left? You sure? After they eat their food. <laughs> Did you have any yet? Did you taste any yet? Not yet. You better get some.
it down and then press that hold it down light and then press all the way. compile everything in a stock pot okay. and then pour the water and then start it from there but I'm gonna go through it don't worry okay. about it yeah it's a little sweet in there because it's a nectar yeah that's that yeah that and whole foods yeah yeah, it's a liquid. They got liquid smoke, um, mesquite, hickory, and they got applewood too. Huh? Oh no, you want to look at it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go over it. Everybody just see me. Oh, you about to leave? Uh, well, you know I'm gonna. I can give. I can give the recipe to the pastors so they they can give it out to everybody. No, 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 Cobra. She's like, where is it? Where is that? Okay. Well, Bragg's is soy. Yeah, yeah, that's why they call it coconut aminos, because they're saying it's like a replacement. Yeah. Soy, period. Tofu, seitan, all that stuff. All right, and my second question is, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your glasses got everything to do with DHA, uh, docosa hexaenoic acid. It's one of the main omega-3 fatty acids. It's usually not in a lot of the foods you eat. 
but if you increase your algae content, um, and what's another good source? Purslane, which is a wild herb that grows, but mainly sea vegetables have a good amount of DHA in there. So if you increase your sea vegetable content, you know, seaweed, kelps, and things like that, you'll get your DHA numbers up and it'll help. Usually sight problems are connected to digestion. Are you eating soy? Yeah, try and let it leave it alone for a little while and you'll start seeing some differences. Okay? Give it a soy No problem. Um, I don't have any cards on me right now, but we do have a medium for everybody to write their information down. Though. Okay. I think I know what I'm doing. I think I know what I'm doing. Look at everybody. Everybody talking, everybody smiling. That's what food does. That's why we got to get back to that. No cell phone. Well, yeah, there's a couple people. But mostly it's one, one phone. Everybody else's phones is down, you know? Engaged. Oh no, there's seasoning in there. There's okay. the coconut aminos is in there, there's salt, there's pepper in there. Um liquid smoke. Because that's why people like eating meat because of smoke. So they actually have liquid smoke where you got hickory, you got mesquite, they got applewood. Yeah, so you can do this to an eggplant, you can do this to your squash. You know, when I do my macaroni and cheese and I, I, do, I use nuts, I add smoke to it, then, it's, then it tastes like gouda. And you see? Okay, cool. Well, I'll, I'll get to it right now. one of the ingredients. That's one of them. Food allergies? She's allergic to coconut? Usually food allergies have to do with the diet. You got the allergies because you're eating the wrong way and your body's just confused. So once you start eating better, a lot of your allergies go away. Well, I gotta see what what the, what that stuff is, cause she's probably still putting something inside she ain't agreeing with. Yeah. Make an announcement um, that you do have plates for sale. Tell them what you got. And then. Oh yeah, I am. I'm about to quiet everybody yeah, down. But that's what I'm talking. It's over. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Greetings, greetings, everyone. Oh no. There we go. Can I get everyone's attention? Hello, hello, hello. We about to get into the second part. I know it's three o'clock. We're still going though, we're still going. And keep your silverware too. Don't throw, don't throw it away. You heard that, oh? <laughs> All right, we about to get into the second part. Y'all ready for the second part? <laughs> no. <laughs> y'all don't want no more food then, huh? Well, I gotta get y'all attention back. Y'all wanna know how I made these collars, don't you? All right, how y'all like the food? Huh? Those are just collar, those are just collard greens, man. Now we know them for putting turkey neck, fat back, and all the rest of that stuff in there, and use none of it. Can you eat that at Thanksgiving? Yes. Can you feed that to your family? Yes. And you will use the bathroom the next morning. Okay? You know y'all ain't using the bathroom like I used to. All right. So um, we're supposed to be going till three. Um, we're going a little longer. You know, if people have to go. I definitely understand, but I'm going to continue to go. Um, until we conclude this. Um, those were samples. I actually cooked food. I have food for sale. So if y'all want a plate, 
of food. We have plates of food here. And the main thing that I got up here is one of my specialties I call Asian noodles. Um, anybody who likes lo mein, it's a take on lo mein. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's salty, it's salty. You got vegetables. Oh, it's just, it's delicious. You're going to be addicted. So I have the Asian noodles. I have the green beans that you see me cooking right here. Um, and y'all ate up all the collars. <laughs> but um, we got green beans, we got the green beans, and we have the Asian noodles. Um, that would be y'all plate if anybody's interested in getting um, any plates of food. Um, well, because there's no collars, it's just the green beans and the noodles. What are we going to do? 12? Yeah. I usually do between 15 and 18. And the reason why is because the ingredients I use are like, y'all already know what it is. A lot of work. You'll see all the steps I took just to give y'all this little demo. So in, in making a spread, it takes time, it's energy. So that's what it is. But because it's just the noodles and the green beans, it's just a $12 plate. But believe me, you're going to be satisfied, full, and you're going to want the recipe when you're done. All right? Um, anybody want a plate? Any hands in here? OK, we got at least 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want the, huh? huh. Oh, by the, by the way, everybody, this is my queen, and her name is Lurie. And she is a seamstress. She designed her dress. She made my apron. OK, ain't no joke. All right, he just embarrassed me a little bit. but um, Peace and light, everybody. Um, I just want to personally give thanks to everybody in here just for sitting and listening to him. Um, he pop a long win, so he can have y'all in here all night. Um, <laughs> But again, we give thanks. We really, really appreciate this opportunity to come here. Um, this is our first time in Greenville, and I can tell you right now, we would love to come back. Um, yeah. And we hope that y'all would have us back as well. Yes, yes. Um, I'm just going to say a few things, and then um, the way that I'm going to do the food, if you want food, I'll start. We start in the front row for the sample, so I'm going to start in the back for the people who want the plates. Um, just raise your hand in the back. You know, we'll do the silent hand up method, and I'll come to y'all and make sure y'all get y'all plates, okay? Um, yes, we take swipe cards. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, and I'll be floating around here, too, if you have questions about the products or the food and whatnot, um, if he's speaking. Um, last but not least, I do want to give thanks um, to the people who made this possible. Um, <clears throat> one of which is Rashad. Please give it up for him. Please give it up for him. I'll tell y'all the truth. If Rashad was not as persistent and consistent and persevered as much as he did, we would not be here. Okay? He really put in a lot of work to get us where we're at right now. Okay? He's been very hospitable. Um, he's kept in good contact with us over the months planning this event, and we really do give thanks to you. And you really stretched your hand out and showed, you know, you wanted us, you made it happen. And that's what we like. We like to see people that make it happen. Yeah. Yes, definitely. In addition to that, um, I would like to thank the people whose home that we're in right now. Um, Pastor Kashina and Pastor Lorenzo, thank you so much. Planted by faith. Planted by faith opened their doors up to us, and they didn't even know us. Okay? That's huge. Because when we don't know people, we be like, well, we don't know them. And it's no hard feelings. Um, but, but it's real. And we really, really appreciate y'all letting us into your home that y'all have built. Um, we just give thanks. We really do. We give thanks for that. Definitely. Yes. All right. He pop a long win. I'm, I'm a long win. Um, I'm going to get off now. I'm going to let him finish his, his uh, demonstration, and then I'll be in the back getting um, numbers to plate. Yes? Yes, I'm going to get that to him, because he's going to break it all the way down for you, because he just know it. And 
Where am I from? Oh, I'm from Detroit. Okay. Yeah. And I, you know, I dabble in the South a little bit too, so. He's from a, he's, he's from a few places. Okay. Sure, sure. Okay, so with her saying that, that's very good because, okay, we'll just hold all the questions to the end because there's actually a Q&A at the end anyway. Um, so if y'all have questions, please write them down. We do want to answer them, and Definitely. we would love if um, the live stream audience could, could hear it as well. Um, so I think that's it, right? All right. Peace and light, everybody. Thank you, baby. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so tag team. I don't, I don't think of everything. I don't get it all out. She always got my back, my side, my front. And that's what's necessary. That's my mitochondria right there. All right. So with the bean, with the green beans, they're looking real good up here now. Um, I added a little salt, a little pepper. That's going to make the water come out quicker. Um, they brown, they're cooking down, and the next step is to fill the pot with the vegetable broth and then just let that thing cook all the way down. So whoever's getting a plate, y'all will be able to taste what these green beans are going to do. Um, and they looking like, whew, y'all lucky I didn't get me a little hunger attack. All right. So let me talk about these products that I have up here because I decided to bring choice select uh, products that I know would be most effective, all right? Um, the first thing that I have on the table is something called sea moss. Uh, who's heard of sea moss? Okay, very good. All right, so for those who don't know, oh yeah, that's right, I don't need to use that. I got mine, right? You on, you on. I'm on, okay. Sea moss is a red algae. It's a sea vegetable that goes back 500 million years. What makes it so amazing is that that bottle you're looking at, that glass bottle with that brown stuff right there, yeah, I need to just come down and grab one, right? That'll make sense. Look, this thing right here is a human body in a bottle. This is a plant analog to your body. It has all 108 minerals, not because I added it, but because the creator bestowed that upon it itself, okay? I added some other herbs in there, such as soursop, which those are, those are the leaves I have down there, the soursop leaves, okay? And these were hand-picked in St. Croix a few weeks back. So these are fresh off of a tree. Now, you get your silica from this, you get your iodine. Why you need your iodine? Thyroid, T3 and T4. That's how you govern your metabolism, all right? Um, DHA is in here. Brother asked me a question about glasses earlier. DHA is docosa hexa enoic acid. You can just write DHA down and look it up. That way y'all get it. Docosa means 22. Hexa means six, and then anoic acid is the type of, type of acid it is. This is an omega-3 fatty acid, which is essential for your living and vision, okay? When you open up your eyes, light enters your eyes. It hits your retina. From your retina, it ends up hitting something called the SN, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. This is your biological clock. 12-hour cycles, just like a clock. That's how you know when to go to sleep and when to get up and when to go to work. It's internal. Because you set your alarm for 7 o'clock, but you'll get up at 6.45 on your own. How did you do that? Because you have the SN, you have your own clock, all right? And then from that clock dictates how your body operates. Your body knows what hormones to produce, what proteins to produce, what things to do given what time of day it is, and only knows what time of day it is because of the light that comes in because of the sun. But if you're inside all day, or if you're using blue light all day, then at 11 p.m. when you're on the computer looking at that screen, your body thinks it's noon. So it's going to start producing stuff like it's noon. What do you think jet lag is? 
That's what jet lag is. That's your body's chemistry being thrown off because your biological clock and the metabolism are not in sync. Okay? DHA is what um, is in the membranes of the photoreceptor cells that make up your vision, that make up your retina, that make up your sight. All of those membranes have DHA in there. All right? So you want to increase that DHA. It's in mama's milk and everything. But they say you can only get it from fish. But the fish get it from the algae. <laughs> and this is one of the greatest sources of it is the sea moss. Um, I've been drinking it. I've been taking this my whole life. This is something Dr. Sabi had for breakfast and dinner every day until his last days. It was always about sea moss. Sea moss is kind of a broad term. This is specifically conjus crispus, which makes this different is this darker pigment, meaning it holds more light, which means it's going to benefit you a lot greater. Okay? So anybody that I put on protocols for diabetes, lupus, multiple sclerosis, all types of stuff, they have to take large quantities of sea moss. I had somebody recently who had a horrible cough for, for years. We met, and what I did was I sent her the sea moss. She started taking it, and she still had the cough. So I just told her to increase the dosage, and it went away. It went away. So there's so many things that this will help you with your skin, your hair, your nails. It's a demulcent. So it nourishes the mucus lining of your digestive system, okay? If your mucus lining is not intact, you cannot absorb the nutrients. Remember, we eat to get the nutrients out. If you can't get the nutrients out, then the only thing you're doing is creating a lot, a lot of fecal matter, okay? That's all you're doing. You're just making the toilet real happy, okay? But you're not getting anything out of it. So you want to get things out of it, and you get things out of it by keeping your mucus lining intact, and you keep it intact through the sea moss that I have. The soursop leaves, not my, not my saying, scientists and published papers, 100,000 times the strength of chemotherapy. Okay, soursop is the cancer killer. I got another herb called uh, Congo root, just the same. This has high levels of tryptophan. Tryptophan helps you with your sleep, okay? And people say, sleep, I sleep. No, sleep, real sleep. We talking no blue light. When you have blue light and your phone on and all types of lights on, when you're trying to sleep, your body does not sleep. You might go to bed, but your body is just getting tore up because of the frequency of the light. You have to turn your phone off or to turn the screen down. You need darkness when you go to bed. Tryptophan helps you to dream better, helps you to have clearer dreams, all right? Um, and in addition to that, um, mucus, it gets mucus out, it gives you great energy, things like that. Um, and then the last two I'm going to talk about. Now, all these products that I'm showing you, I formulate, I formulate based upon the information that I received over the years. Um, certain formulas was passed down to me. And some I created based on the information I learned. So everything you see was made by me, OK? Um, the immunoblast is for your lymphatic system, which is a system that is not closed in. It is an open system. This is where all your fats, all nutrients, and things like that get transported through. <laughs> he needs some love right now, or she needs some love right now. So, Bile, which is very important in your body because you're an aqueous medium, meaning you're all water. How do you deal? How do you deal with fat? If you're all water and you eat oil and you take fat, how do you manipulate the fat in your body if you're water? You know fat and water don't mix. So you need an emulsifier. Ajax, palm olive or emulsifiers. That's how you get the grease and gook out your pan. Okay, because it emulsifies and allows things that normally don't combine to come together. All right, so this increases your bile production with your liver and your gallbladder and also cleans your lymphatic system where all the white blood cells run rampant at when you have issues, okay? And lastly, we have some salve. And I always tell the story of my finger. Tip of my finger got cut off when I was a child. Playing, yeah, I was playing. I was playing with, with chairs at the karate class. It was a carpet just like this, and we were sliding them, 
and I hit something in the floor and I went flying and the chair went flying and when I got up, my finger was swinging like a pendulum off a piece of flesh. And I'm like, what? What are y'all looking at? And this thing going everywhere and everybody's just like, and then I looked down. And I was just like in shock. I didn't cry. I didn't hurt. It was just like, yo, my finger's gone. So between the salve and some stitches, I got my finger. And it's not numb. I still feel it. Nail still grows and everything. And that has everything to do with this. So it helps with keloids. It helps with stretch marks. It helps with, um, you know, you put it on the belly, you know, when you're pregnant. Um, for women's breasts, um, behind, eye, all that. Arthritis. Um, vapor rub, you know, if you got indigestion, phlegm in your chest, sinuses, you could put it on your nose. It's multi purpose and it lasts, it lasts a decent amount of time. So I got the salve, I got the immunoblast, soursop leaves, and I have the sea moss. I figure that was enough in order, you know, to. Add a, actually, she raised first, sorry. The soursop leaves, just like tea, you just take one leaf out, crumble it in some hot water, and let it steep. Yep, sea moss is the same thing, hot water, you drop a tablespoon in there and two cups of water, you drink one cup in the morning and the other cup at night. It's enough for the whole month, for all 30 days. I have more sea moss, I have more. The, the sea moss is 60, $60 for a month's supply. The sour side leaves is 35, this will last a month, maybe even over. You know, because even though you crumble the leaf in, you could use a whole quart of water you can crumble one leaf in, you're not going to drink a whole quart of sour sop tea in a day. Like, that'll last you a couple days, so you got enough to last. Yeah, ktthearchdegree.com, just my name.com, ktthearchdegree, and arch, not arc, A-R-C-H. Degree.com. You can order on there, and you can also send inquiries to my um, email, which is lovegreenlife at gmail, L U V G R E E N L U V, love, not how you really spell love, obviously, right? L U V G R E E N L I F E at gmail.com. Huh? Oh, yes, I'll tell them. What's ktthearchdegree.com, K-T-T-H-E-A-R-C-H-D-E-G-R-E-E. The immunoblasts, usually they're 50. Um, I'll do, I'm doing them for 45, 45 today. And this is a month's supply. They're droppers, so you don't have to, like, guzzle the whole bottle. Okay, it's real potent, it's real strong. Just to let you know, this is the most complicated, um, lengthy um, compound that I create. It's a three-day process, and it's like 18 steps. If I mess up a step, I got to start all over again. That's a lot of money down the drain. Luckily, I didn't mess up. But um, <laughs> this is, um, you would only take about two dropperfuls twice a day. This will last you a month. So though it's $45, you're investing for the whole 30 days which gives you a good, lunar, a good lunar cycle to really see if, you know, what differences and how it assisted and helped you as opposed to just being a week or two weeks. How's those noodles in the back? Oh, wow, I got the mmm. I got the mmm. That ain't English. That ain't Spanish. That's just human. Great question. Now, most people that have bellies, Guts, problems, issues, losing weight. It's usually because they're consuming large quantities of wheat. Okay? And wheat sneaks in in different ways. Crackers, bread, pasta, beer. Right? And what wheat is, wheat is a hybrid. It's not a real grain. The original grain that wheat is perpetrating to be is called spelt. Spelt like the past tense of spelling, but <laughs> mixed with Ebonics, <laughs> right? Spelt noodles, you know? But they're all spelt. 
All right, so you're not getting any wheat, any gluten, or anything like that. Like I said, I'm not just going to hit you with the lead ad alone. I'm going to show you to guess what else you could try, right. you know, and y'all are able to experience it yourself. So it got like a spicy, sweet, salty blend with it. There's zucchini in there. There's crooked neck squash. Everything I got, I got from like your farmer's markets down here. These collard greens were grown in South Carolina. Like y'all are eating things from your environment right now, okay? So there's, um, there's red, orange, yellow, and green bell pepper, zucchini, crooked neck squash, onions. Um, I believe that's it, the noodles. Those are the main, main parts to it. And then the coconut aminos, I just cooked the onions down and the stuff down in this, and it just created this real thick, nice sauce, and then mixed it with the noodles. Real simple. Um, question you asked earlier was about no 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 no. you asked about the um semen and stuff okay so we got to repeat questions because other people listening all right so what the brother asked was okay what about semen what about raw don't they say when you cook stuff down it loses nutrients This immunoblast is a three-day process. 99% of all of Shavy's products that he cooked, they cook for hours on the stove. When you make tea, you boil to create an infusion to extract and pull all those properties out. All right? So it's the same thing with food. My thing is, if I can cook these herbs for three days and help you get over an issue, then why, when I cook food, it's going to hurt you? It's the same thing. It's just breaking it down. Now, the reason why they say that is because when you add heat to proteins, it denatures proteins, meaning protein got a shape. And to give you an example, um, for instance, a spoon. How do you know what a spoon is used for? Design denotes function. The minute I change the shape of this spoon, it ain't a spoon no more. You can't use it anymore. So that's what they usually say about foods. You cook it, you add the heat, it changes the shape, it can't do the same thing. Sometimes heat is what makes you be able to assimilate it better, you know? And sometimes the water and all those extraction methods helps to pull things that are deep inside that plant so you don't have to do it when you're chewing it with your body. You save yourself time. So what I would say is with steaming and with raw, it should be a ratio like 70-30, 80-20. Same thing with alkaline and acid. You don't want a total alkaline diet. You want some acidity in there too. So it's going to be like an 80-20. All right, so you balance it off that way. Okay. Um, so, did I answer your question? Okay. And then he asked, she asked, anybody else had a question? Yes? How much should you eat every morning? Yeah, so you would. Well, it's one tablespoon to two cups of water. So a cup. You would drink a cup of that for breakfast, and the other cup you'll save for the evening. So then you'll have two cups per day for 30 days. So this is a bottle with 64 cups of tea inside. It's a concentrate. OK? Yes? Well, this is the thing. What is hypertension? What does that even mean? What does high blood pressure mean? You know? When you're dealing with high blood pressure, you got to think of a tube because your vessels are tubes and pressure is the force exerted on the walls. So when we were talking about making a simple syrup earlier, that's going to increase pressure. You know, there's different things that's going to increase pressure. Somebody just insulted you, your pressure is going to go up. You know, if you sit down, your pressure will drop. You know, when you're up, your pressure is a certain way. When you sleep, you're a certain way. So it's a cycle. So it all goes back to circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms is the rhythm of the day, 24-hour cycle in two, two intervals of 12. All right? So you got to line yourself up with the day again. A lot, of, a lot of the problems that we have in our body is because we're not in sync with nature no more. You know? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, that's temporary. Think about it. You got, a, you got an operating system of all fluid, and you add something in there. If I have a full cup of water and drop three ice cubes, and the water's at the top, it's going to spill over. That's just what it is. 
It's like, what is it an hour later? What is it two hours later? What is it three hours later? Because initially you're going to feel that spike because you're eating. So, mm -hmm. okay, so genetics. The thing about genetics is this. Genetics is temporary. This is what genetics is. Remember we talked about tradition? Great, great grandma, great, great granddad started eating mac and cheese. So because he started eating mac and cheese, the mitochondria, the DNA inside of him started to alter and mutate based upon this new thing he put in his body that don't give him nothing good. Your body has to do something with it so it alters and it changes. Then when a child is born, they inherit that trait just in case they start eating macaroni and cheese. And that macaroni and cheese gene gets transferred all the way down. So how do you overcome the gene? You go back to the original. You start eating correctly again. Then the genetics start getting back in alignment and work in proper order so you won't have that problem anymore. You know, hypertension, CMOS, Sawasab helps tremendously with blood pressure. Yeah. Yeah, you have to because who loves you more than yourself? Every time you make a meal, look, that's why people who don't know how to cook can eat their food but nobody else can. You know what I'm saying? They be like, hey, dog, yo, try this, man, try this. <laughs> and you like, <laughs> all right. Anytime somebody nibbling, it's an issue. When you see a nibble, don't even ask if they like it. Just keep walking, you know? But the reason why they can eat it is because they put their intent in the food, and to them, they like it because they feel their energy. What, in terms of diseases and issues and problems? Well, yeah, there's, there's a, just like in life with uh, careers and things, people are further than others. It depends upon what work and what energy you're putting into it. Of course, like the, you, when you were, you wasn't born with hypertension. You didn't come out getting metformin. Like the minute that they smacked you, they gave you your first prescription, like <laughs> just in case, you know. Yes. That's just because um, carrageenan, which is inside of the membrane of the sea as a strain. Can you repeat the question? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm going to get it. Y'all told me to repeat, right? <laughs> what she just asked was when she's looking at the sea moss, she noticed that some have a different color. One, one is darker than the other. And that's just because of the solutes. Um, when I make the sea moss, I have to strain it. And when it gets strained, if it sits there, some of the particles go to the bottom. And unless it's like shaking real good, just like when you have fresh juice, you know, you have some that have some of the material, solute material in there, and some don't have as much. So that's why some is darker than others. Does that take away from its nutritional content? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Helper. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. Chemotherapy, man. Is anybody see uh, the the Henrietta Lacks story? Anybody? Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta Lacks. All right. Anybody who ain't seen that, Oprah starred in it. She played the daughter of Henrietta Lacks. Y'all have to watch that movie. Any information that we know about cellular biology to this day is based upon the, the, the theft of tissue of a black woman in the 50s, okay? DNA, its structure and its information did not come forward until 1951, October though. Earlier that year is when they took the tissue out of this black woman. So all of a sudden they know everything about cells and DNA now, okay? What made her tissue so special is it multiplied immortally. So they're still trading and selling her tissue all over the world to this day. They have replicated her cells, some like 20,000 tons or something like that of her cells have been replicated and like uh, transported out, exchanged and sold. So that's a great movie to watch um, for physiology, for health, and just to find out black woman how powerful y'all are. Like, there's an immortal cell line. Her cells are called H-E-L-A, HeLa cells, and they're not even categorized as human any longer. They're still multiplying. She died in the 50s.
but her cells are still alive, which means she's still alive and teaching us everything. Oh, okay. You know? Oh, we're out? Food's gone. Whoa. It always happens like that. Food is gone. Yeah, yes, 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 because look, what is cancer? Cancer is really a disease of light. It's a disease of light. How do I know that? Where else do you hear the word cancer besides a disease? The stars, right? We're about to move into the sign of cancer. When is the first day of cancer? Summer solstice. What is the summer solstice? The first day of summer. What makes that day so important? It's the longest day of the year. Longest day of the year means longest period of sunlight. Okay? Longest period of sunlight. So by call, they called it cancer for a reason. Which one was here first, the disease or the astrological name? So why would they call it that unless it has something to do with that? It's the light. It's the lack that, you, that they're getting enough light in. And because they're not getting enough light in, you're getting too many mutations at a certain rate where you get abnormal cell growth. So they need light. They keep them in a room. They don't let them have plants. They don't let you eat vegetables or fruits. They say you're going to get an infection. What? I'm dying, and you're not going to let me have I can't get a, keep a flower in my room? Yeah, so what they need is they need to increase their charge. They got to increase their energy. You increase your charge, you increase your energy. Then what will happen is your body will do the rest. I'm not a healer. I tell everybody that all the time. I'm a consultant. You're the healer. Once I give you the information, you do the work. You have the intelligence. Yes. Get rid of scar tissue. Okay, now that's a difficult one. Um, we have two systems in our body, believe it or not. We have a perineural network that's similar to salamanders. Like we, we used to have the potential to regrow a whole limb. This is why when people get amputated, they still can feel their fingers and arm and everything because it's still there. And keloiding is actually um, a, a, your body actually trying to do that process again. That's what the keloid thing is all about. That's why you have scars with scabs but then you have keloid too, because that's showing two, two processes that you have, whether you heal or you can actually regenerate. Um, scar tissue is showing that you're healing, not regenerating. So in that essence, you would just have to give your body the, nat the necessary nutrients that deal with regeneration, which is vitamin C, which is iron, which is silica. All those things add to the regenerative process. So I would increase all of those things. Oh, sea moss to be sea moss is everything. This is my number one. Anybody ask me what should I have? I say get that, because it's easy, it's simple, and it hits straight to the point. Well, that's very good. She just asked. She just asked, what's the difference between my sea moss? She just asked, what's the difference between my sea moss and the sea moss you could get at most West Indian areas? This is called Conjus crispus. That's called Gracilaria. The difference is the pigments inside. If you notice, if you cook Gracilaria, it's not going to be dark like this. It's going to be very light. Not to say there's no nutrition. It's just not as dense as what I do. And then I add soursop, and I add an herbal mixture in there, too, to enhance all of its effects as well. Yes. Okay, I have a question. It's kind of a joke, but I'm serious at the same time. I'm concerned about the statement you made about the passive men, and you said something about the vegetable oil or soy. Yeah. And so, like, if I want to feed my man something, as far as, like, to make him, and I guess, for lack of a better word, less feminine, we'll just say that. I don't know what term to use. More masculine. Yeah, what, yeah. yeah, more masculine. Right, right. You want to what would I need up? to cook him up? How do I make him a man-up meal? Yeah, what kind of oils am I using? What is the man-up meal? Right. I got you. What's the man-up meal? <laughs> All right. So, you want to know, do you want to know what would man, man him up more than anything else? So simple. Lettuce, 
and watermelon. I need to be specific. I listened to KT and I went and I got that iceberg. And he even softer than he was before. What happened? So pretty much every lettuce but iceberg. Okay, romaine's good, all, all, the, all the pigmented ones. And then the weeds, the things that you think are weeds are lettuce. There's a wild lettuce, um, lactuca. Um, y'all could, could look it up, but y'all type in the word lactuca. Um, and then there's different derivatives of it, but they grow out here in the grass and in the meadows. You can pick them up. If you break the stem, if you break the stem, a semen-like fluid comes out. You hear what I'm saying? It's like, what you talking about? There's a lettuce, there's a wild lettuce called Lactuca. That's his, that's his Latin name. And what I'm saying is, it's, it's a, it's, it grows and it's a long stalk. Y'all see it all the time. Y'all just don't know that's what it is. And if you break the stalk, this white stuff comes spilling out. All right? I'm not telling you start drinking the white stuff. I'm just letting you know it's consistent. Now, if you go back to antiquity and look at the walls of Kemet, um, there was a deity that dealt with males. And ironically enough, do you know what his name was? Men. Like, they, they didn't give it much thought. They kept it real simple. M-I-N. They spelled it with an I instead of an E, but his name was Men. And he stands on the, he's standing on the wall with his elbow up and his arm at an angle, and he has an erection. And he, he stands for male's virility, because that's, a, that's just a symbol for virility, which is not just for sexual things, but just a man being aggressive, standing up, doing things, handling business, okay? What was next to him was a plant, and that plant was lettuce, was the wild lettuce. So the wild lettuce was his totem. And if he's eating lettuce a lot, you know, and I'm not saying salads drenched in ranch dressing, you know what I mean? Um, and he's eating watermelon and swallowing the seeds, black seeds. Now, why is a seedless grape an oxymoron? Can't have fruit without seeds. And let me, let me tell y'all, people be like, why can't I get a seedless grape? I, and I tell a woman, I say, okay, you meet a man, and y'all together for two years, and y'all get mad, and he like, yo, I'm shooting blanks, baby. Y'all might not last too long. <laughs> Vice versa, you meet a girl, y'all together, y'all get married, and she like, oh, my eggs, they ain't dropping. There's a problem. So why do we hold that so dear to each other in our relationships and when we eat food, we skip it? How do you think men get sterile? How do you think women are not able to get fertilized? Because y'all eat fruit with no seeds. That's the, that, that's the only other technology that trumps ours. I mean, a seed got an infinite amount of plants in there. Forever. What is forever? A seed is forever. So a plant having seeds in it lets you know how much energy is inside. So you're consuming the flesh that they're getting from the seed. You see what I'm saying? Because the only reason why the fruit exists is for the seed. Yes. The young lady over there, she's interested in producing a manly man. Yes. But what she must understand there's responsibility comes with having a manly man. Yes. A lot of women don't want a manly man. Okay. Because when you get a manly man, you want to rule him. Oh, boy. And when he takes whatever he takes to make that manly man, it's going to bust your home up because it's going to bust your heart. <laughs> hey. He just had some watermelon this morning. Leave him alone, okay? He had a couple slices of watermelon. That's all. Don't worry about it. All right. So, to play to play it very safe in comedy, be as safe as I can. Um, listen, we 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 are a damaged people, okay? Um, what we understand as tradition and history and everything like that is based upon a fragmented history that we can't even recall. Yeah. That affects our relationships. 
that affects our understanding of each other's roles and how we resonate with one another. So relationships are based upon men and women and what they want to put up with, with one another. You see, some, some men can handle certain things, some women can handle certain things, some men cannot, some women cannot, and that's how you refine yourself and find out who you want to be with. Biologically, physiologically, in order for a man to produce the necessary hormones and be in balance with himself, those are particular things that he can take that will help with that balance. Now, the same way the men would take like lettuce and watermelon, women can actually take those things too and it'll benefit her. But I would take things that look like, you know, your area, things like papaya, things like mango, you know, things like strawberries, you know, stay well hydrated. You know, when you do things like that, then you become in a balance there. He becomes in a balance there. And if both of y'all are balanced, then y'all can create an equilibrium with one another. Whatever your specific thing is, because no relationship is the same. What me and her can rock with, another couple will be like, nah, bro. And the same thing when we look at them, you know? So it depends upon you and what you want. But, but bi biologically, those are the answers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Okay. So I'm asking this because I'm doing a live broadcast for um, my followership. Oh, great. So um, can you answer this whole myth about protein from animals and plant protein and how vegans don't get protein or you can't build muscle without protein? Right. You need animal protein. Got you. Very good. Okay. So, protein, protein, protein. What is it? It's just a word. And the reason why it's a word is because they say, see, this, this is the tricky thing. They say protein is meat. So anytime any, I ask anybody what is protein, they say, I get it from eating meat. I can't eat it from eating vegetables. But that's a lie because you got to understand what it is. What is protein? Protein falls in categories. Design denotes function, like I said earlier. That's all they are, they're tools. You got conjugated protein, you got genetic protein, you got globular protein. Globular, hold on one second, let me finish the thought. Globular protein is like hemoglobin, which you use to transport the oxygen around, okay? You got structural protein like collagen that helps to build up your framework. You got genetic protein like your DNA. You see what I'm saying? So my thing is this. Did this not like seed and grow? It stands up against the seasons and the weather. It has structure, so it must have structural protein. It transports chemicals around the body. There must be proteins that help it to do that. You see, and it knew to be green, it knew to have a certain shape. That's its genetic structure, so it has that too. So plants have everything that's alive has protein in it. And the way you know this is, Forget me going up to The Rock or Floyd Mayweather. Let me drop you in the Congo in front of a silverback. Huh? Go over there, and I want you to urinate on one of its children and just smile at him like you ain't about to do nothing because you don't eat no protein. So you don't got no muscles. So I could take you. How about the largest land animal being an elephant? Biggest bones. Its teeth is so gangster, it went from enamel to ivory. Can you imagine if you had ivory teeth? You could like bite walnut shells and everything. You know, so when you look around at animals that eat plant-based diets, where are they getting their protein from? From the plants. Have you ever punched a tree before? With all your might? Because you're protein, and the plant ain't, so you should be able to high ya and knock that thing down. You'll break your head because of that bark, because of its root system, because of its structure. So for everybody who says you can't get protein from plants, I say, okay, how do they grow? How do they stand up? How do they do all their chemical reactions? And how do plant-based organisms thrive and grow way beyond us? There's nobody got better memory than an elephant. You know? So that's what I got to say about protein. Stay away from the protein shakes. Say no way to whey. Okay, whey protein ain't nothing but the waste product 
of the processing of dairy. It's the bacterial froth that gathers at the top of making cheese. All right, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look, if I want to make sure you keep coming and picking up my crack rock, I gotta set the, I gotta set the conditions for that so you can keep coming back and getting my crack rock. You know, um, the question that she just asked was she said she has an associate of hers that's ill and the doctor autoimmune disease and the doctor told told her or the medical people professionals told her to stay out of the sun. And she thought that was quite ironic because I was saying cancer and other things are diseases of light. The main thing they do in a the hospital, they don't open up blinds and curtains and open a window and let fresh air in. You in shade, you're in darkness, you hear bleeps and boops all night. Boop, 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 bleep, boop, 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 bleep. That's all you hear, that's all you're part of. And that food, come on y'all, they know they wrong. I'm like, if anybody is going to have a five-star restaurant, hospitals need to have them. Like, I'm, come on, I'm on my deathbed, bruh. This dude about to get hung, he get a last meal. And that last meal is some real food. What are you giving me this cookie cutter? Just drop it in the water and it'll expand food stuff. Like, no, it's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, they, they have to create an environment to substantiate their false claims. Because you never think of the environment, you think of you. But we learned in elementary school of a very important word called homeostasis, which is where you create a, recipro or a reciprocal balance between the external environment and the internal environment. So you gotta always take into account where you are and what's going on inside, they play off each other. It's, it's an it's electron leakage. Repeat the question. She said obesity. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn. <laughs> I'd just be going at it. Um, she, asked what about, she asked what about obesity? You know, what's really going on inside with that situation? And it's, it's a leakage of electrons. It's like a short. Um, if you have any type of electronic device, if it stops working, you notice that there's a problem with the wire. It got cut. It got snipped. The insulation got compromised. So the electrons are spilling out. Why is that a problem? Because it needs to be a constant current with no resistance. The less resistance, the more efficient the current will be. And if you're leaking, you'll have a short. And, and people that are obese are constantly leaking electrons and your leptin receptor gets, um, what's the word, gets uh, inhibited. And by your leptin receptor getting inhibited, you can never have the feeling of uh, satiation or satiety which deals with satisfaction. Not being full, being satisfied. Because being satisfied means that you have consumed the electron number you needed to provide your body with the proper nutrients. If it gets inhibited, you don't have that measuring tool to know whether or not you've had enough. So you're gonna keep getting more plates. You're gonna keep eating. And then the amount of energy that you're expending to actually digest food is gonna greatly outweigh the amount of energy you're getting out of the food you're eating. And that's called being in the red. And the more red you in, the more in debt you're in. And, and oh, debt is obesity, isn't it? So that, that's pretty much what's going on with that situation. Okay, part two. So, okay, so now with bowel movement. Yes. Um, can you tell us like how often you should have a bowel movement a day or if you're having the correct amount or you know if something's going on if you're not you know doing as many in a certain yes period. how many bowel yeah. movements you should be having a bowel movement after every meal uh, when you get up in the morning you should be taking a bowel movement you, you was laid out for eight hours body is removing all types of waste rejuvenating your system creating trash you know you got to get that stuff out. So if you get up in the morning and you know you got up at 7.30 and now it's 2 and you ain't had a bowel movement, that's a problem. If you know you just ate this much food at McDonald's 
and you did not use the bathroom. Where is it? It's somewhere. It's in you, you know? So colon health is number one, man. You really got to take care of that thing, you know? Because that's where some real specific things take place. You got your gut flora that's responsible for consuming the cellulose and then consuming the cellulose that you're not able to do synthesize fatty acids that you use to do a whole lot of functions in your body. So it's not just like a, 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 um, a bowel chamber. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot more going on. It's really your lower brain. Your intestines and your large intestines are your brain. There's neurons down there, believe it or not. That's why people like they think with their gut. We think with our appetite. We don't think with our higher selves. A lot of people think with their lower selves. And when they think with their lower, it's all appetite. This is what drives them. You know, and you got to create a balance between the two. You got to bridge the two and you do it, you know, with the heart. So to answer the question, first thing in the morning, after every meal, you know, at least twice a day, at least two times in a day. You know what I mean? If you're doing once, okay, at least something's getting out. But if you go on a whole day and you ain't did nothing yet, you should know that. If you're driving a car and no exhaust came out that pipe, you know that car going to be shutting down real soon. Or you're going to die real soon because you've been breathing that exhaust cycling in the car. What do you think happens when your bowels stay impacted in your colon for weeks on end? You're recycling that bilirubin and all that fecal matter in your blood and your lymphatic system. You'd be like, why is his eyes so yellow? Why is his teeth doo-doo? <laughs> so when people be like, man, you full of, people really are full of it. Like, literally. So how do you get it out? High fiber. Demulcent with your mucus lining. You know what I'm saying? Eating live foods, electron density, drinking what? Water. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they're. Right. And then what about lemon and water? Okay. So water is. Uh, you know, I could do like a 12 hour lecture on water alone. Yeah, see, see, she goes. Serious, he can. He's long winded like that. <laughs> water is a battery. Let me tell you how dope water is. When you're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, that's light. What we're able to see is the visible spectrum. You know about a rainbow, Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. On one side of it, you got infrared, which means below red. You can't see it, okay? Then you got ultraviolet, meaning beyond or above violet. You can't see that either. That's high frequency, right? Anytime the sunlight is up, and even when it's down, there's infrared energy everywhere. When I put infrared energy to water, it turns water into a battery. And how does it do this? Well, water is a molecule. It's one of the best ways to keep hydrogen in our grass because it's so light, it'll just escape in the atmosphere. So how do you keep hydrogen grounded? You bond it with oxygen, you make a molecule. That sits everywhere. That's what water's for, okay? Water provides you with hydrogen, water provides you with oxygen. Because it has hydrogen and oxygen, one of the atoms gives it a positive charge, the other atoms give it a negative charge. When it gets hit with infrared energy, any water that sits near a surface, the bottom of this cup, the side of this cup, your capillaries, your neurons, your mitochondria, when it's sitting against a surface, infrared energy hitting that water creates something called the exclusion zone, EZ, which creates layers of negative charge, pushing all the positive charge in the center. This is why when you take a frozen cup of water out the freezer, what thaws first? The outside. What's next to the surface? The bottom, the side. The center stays cold because that's all protons, and protons represent the cold, and electrons represent the heat. Okay? So I say all that to say, you want to drink spring water, natural water, that's coming down, being filtered by the mountains, and going through all these necessary processes to structure it, because water is not water inside our body. It's actually gel in our body. It turns, in, it turns into this. It turns into a jelly. 
Because it gets structured, and because of how structured it is, it, it creates a form. So if you look at your cells, your cells look like jellos inside, but the jello is water. Um, tap water, too many impurities, not structural, bulk water with no type of, of harmonious structure to it. Um, alkaline water. Alkaline water is a misnomer because people really don't understand alkaline acid, alkalinity, things like that. Um, I was on the bandwagon years ago, probably 10 years ago when, when everything was moving with it. Um, but a lot of those machines, they don't do what they say they do. And the guy who created the machine is actually on a movement against the machine. Like he's not even an advocate for the Cajun machine any longer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like a snowflake okay so you want to I need the mic oh it went off uh, died okay gotcha 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 yeah you need to find a spring or well you're but look you're in Greenville like there's mountains y'all got water I'm sorry I, I don't want to hear it Anybody who's living near mountains in the summertime, like, I'm like, no, nah, bro, no. But no, these mountains, it's, it's amazing. These mountains dictate y'all weather. Like, all the weather y'all get is because of that mountain range. And there's so many aquifers, there's so many springs, y'all got to just go out and check them out, okay? There's other groups of people that go out in the woods and the forest, and they learn all this stuff. And they teach their children, and they be about it. We got to do that, too. We switched, bro, we switched places and don't even know it, you know? So y'all got to go back in the mountains again. But if you're going to drink spring water, if it's in glass, that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Um, in plastic, yeah, you're going to deal with your problem. But it's like living in this society is just toxic. Yeah. So just get hydrated, you know what I mean? And the reason why I said it's psychoreactive, I'm good now, is because I'm like, give intent to your water. Like, oh, man, I know this is like, it might not be, you might not be the best water. But, but, but you look good and I love you and, and you're gonna go in my body and you're gonna, 
my mitochondria is going to love it and, and, and I'm, I'm going to get over this disease. I'm not going to have that itch no more. The itch is gone. You know what I mean? My hair is going to grow and my skin's going to shine. And did I tell you I love you today? And then drink that water. And you'll feel a warm feeling. I'm not lying. Like I said, sometimes this, the, 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 the easiest fixes are so simple. Like we talk about the creator and God putting us Eden. What you, the water's everywhere. It's the answer to so many problems. We have to just take time and study it. You know what I mean? But the, the first thing you do is just put it in you. My thing is, if you don't have access to spring and none of taps all you got, just drink it. Like, you need water. You got to get it in one way or another. Just bless the water. Give it some real intent. Hold hands with your children around it at night with a candle burning or something, you know, and focus on it. And you think I'm playing, but that water, you, you can look it up on Google, water has memory. It can rearrange its molecular structure and it's synonymous to letters in the alphabet. And it can make words and it can make paragraphs, which means when you drink water, this is the same water that was flowing through a rhinoceros's uh, veins at one time. You know what I'm saying? And now you might know information on a rhino all of a sudden. You're like, man, why did I know that? You know, because you got the water in you now. This is all the same water. We learned about the water cycle when we was younger. Water is not new. It goes up and it comes down. It goes up and it comes down. So the water you drunk, yeah, it was in the toilet at one time, maybe. Or maybe it was in a real pristine environment somewhere in Nicaragua, you know? But my thing is get the water in and your temple, your technology will construct the water into what you need it to be when your heart is pure, when your energy is right like that. Can you talk I, about hybrid food? Yes. Huh? Oh. No, no, just before you get off the water, she had a question specifically about that. Oh, I didn't finish. I'm sorry. Let me finish answering her question. Oh, all the way in the back. Okay, I thought I thought you were saying I didn't finish with her. Yes. Yeah, reverse osmosis is just kind of like a filtering kind of thing. And what's what I want y'all to walk away with the most about water is water is intended to be structured, okay? When you see a snowflake, how do you feel? She said cold. No, I'm not saying flurries. I'm saying when they blow one up and you see a snowflake, like a microscopic blow up of one. When you look at the architecture and structure of a snowflake, the design of a snowflake, how do you feel inside? Does, does it do anything to you? She like, nah, I don't do nothing for me. What it do for you? It's beautiful. The symmetry, right? The hexagon, the fractals. It's like, it's so small, but it has all of this specific detail. Who sat down with a pencil and did all that? You know? So your water, when it's structured, becomes something called super cooled water, which is the fourth phase of water. See, we think there's only three states of matter and three states of water. There's four. There's What's the three states of matter? Right. What's the fourth? Plasma. Plasma. Liquid, solid, gas, and plasma. Fire is plasma. Lightning is plasma. Plasma is when the subatomic particles of an atom are separate. Okay? So solid, they real slow. Right? And then when it's liquid, they, I mean, solid's real slow. Gas, I mean, liquid is it's a little quicker. You know, they, they kind of flow and they break in bonds, bind in, break in bond, and that's why you get all that. And in gas, they like crazy. They like a sugar rush with kids at recess. They just run it all over the place. That's why you can't grab gas. You see what I'm saying? But then the next step is those particles, those atoms split. And then you have electrons, atoms, neutrons separated from one another. And that is plasma. And because they separate, they, they exude light because they're decaying from the separation. Their energy levels dropping, so they release light for you to see. So that's why you see lightning and fire, like a flame is plasma. Okay? So in water, you have what? You got liquid water, you got vapor, you got ice, but then you got super cool. Okay? Super cool water where it's almost gelatinous. It's the state that it is in your cells and you want structural water with the water that you drink. 
all right? And that's usually what you get out of a spring and waterfalls and stuff like that. You know, like I said, y'all in Greenville, I know there's some fresh water sources, you know, because I, I, in Atlanta, I draw crystal all the time. That comes from the Blue Ridge Mountains. That's North Georgia. North Georgia is South, South Carolina. I mean, the border is invisible. It's really the same land, you know what I mean? So instead of me going north in Georgia, I would go south here, and all that area where that mountain is like Hiawassee. Hiawassee got springs. I know that for a fact, you know? Yes. How long does spring water last? Once you got it, if you bottled it up and you keep that thing cool in the dark, it's water. It's going to be good, and you're going to drink it. Like, you're going to use it and drink it anyway. And there's so many aquifers that exist underground, wells that have been abandoned. Like, we just have to get more active in rediscovering all of that stuff. And question was, I think she was next, actually, yes. As far as GMOs and um, what, what's the, I'm trying to think of the, the brand name of the GMO, Roundup. Roundup. You, yeah, Roundup. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that, like, as far as the, the plants and the trees and stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, okay, so she, the, well, she was on the mic, so y'all heard her. I don't got to repeat that one. But um, for those who don't know, uh, Roundup is a company um, that was created um, to Patent your mama. Okay, a group of people want to put a patent on your mothers. Why do pharmaceuticals exist? Because I can't patent sea moss because it's made by nature. So what do I do? I study sea moss. I synthesize sea moss and then I patent that thing. So they was like, okay, how do I control the birth? How do I control the growth process? Okay, so I have to patent that whole thing too. So that's how Roundup got created. And the first weed that Roundup went after was what? Dandelion. Why dandelion? Because as long as you're taking dandelion, you ain't going to have no problems. Dandelion root, flower, leaf, what? All the iron you want, all the minerals you want, your cold, it fights cancer, it fights AIDS. Yeah, that yellow flower that grows everywhere that turns to a fluffy ball after a couple weeks that you seed. Like, you feel like a little kid, but do you know what you're doing? You're healing millions of people every time you blow that stuff, because it goes somewhere, it lands in the dirt, it grows up. Somebody who knows what it is can harvest it and use it and help themselves and help their family. So they don't want something so simple to be available, so they change the perception of the masses, so you think it's an invasive weed, so you go out there with Roundup. What is Roundup? That's rounding up a bunch of cattle and stuff. So you're going out there rounding up all of this stuff killing it. And then they took that same thing and used that as pesticides um, on particular fruits and vegetables and also patenting certain seeds that they're making in the lab so that if you if you uh, grow if you're growing corn if you're growing any type of uh, uh, produce and one of their produce seed on your land then they can come with a piece of paper and confiscate all your property because you're illegally growing their crop. They can do that to your house because it's in, it's in your front yard or your backyard. You know, so how do you know what's GMO, what's not, what's pesticide, what's not? We're living in a corrupted society. Thank you so much for coming. It's, it's just, it's hard to gauge. Ain't nothing just pristine and pure. You have to step out the environment and go back to areas of the earth where things are still clear, where the, the, the air is still fresh, where there's not a Wi-Fi signal, where there's not a bunch of street lights everywhere. You know? Well, everything isn't sprayed with the stuff, and they, they label a lot of it. So when you go to your stores and you see something that's conventional, conventional means that, yeah, they can use any type of practices. But guess what? The same way you act with your children when you go to a school, you don't just go with what everything the school say. You ask the teacher questions. You ask the principal questions. You ask the guidance counselor questions. You want to know, how are you going to be affecting my child? What are y'all doing? You got to do that same thing with your grocers. Just because it's a, a Myers or a Kroger or whatever supermarket, that don't mean they better than you. 
you need to go to the grocery manager and say, okay, I know you conventional. Where are you getting these from? Are you getting it from this farm? Okay, are they using this, that, and the third in it? Yeah. No, that's why we have the organic over here, ma'am, because, you know, so people can have the options. Okay, thank you. The farmer's market that I went to to get all this stuff from that was suggested to me by uh, Rashad, um, as well as uh, Earth Fair as well, they have those options. So you can get, you know, fruits and vegetables that haven't, been affected by those chemicals. I have a saying that goes back to memory, and it's that even though you're doing it, even the organic stuff, you can substitute label as organic and still have the same as it, but a lot of people don't. Right. So Monsanto. Mm -hmm. They got their hands mm -hmm. in a lot of stuff, but they're yeah. not everywhere. They're gonna give they're gonna give the illusion as though they're everywhere so that you can be in a situation like, man, like it's every I might as well just go do it because it's just what it is. That's just trying to manipulate your perception, for one. Um secondly, um when you're dealing with when you're dealing with all of these foods, remember. If you look at the atmosphere and put on the right goggles, you'll see trillions of bacteria, billions of viruses. You breathe in all types of stuff all day long. So it's like there's really no escape in the dirt. Like the dirt is everywhere. So it's your intent. It's the fact that you know there's a Monsanto. So you are consciously going to your grocer, checking to see what the thing is, getting the right thing. Your body knows that. So even if there might have been something kind of crazy in there, all that energy and intent that you put in all of that, and that work that you did is going to be effective as well. You see? And like I said, water cycle reactive and you 90% water. So you can really like charge some stuff up, purge some stuff out. But if you really want to get away from Monsanto, do you know what you do? There you go. We got to stop being lazy. Yeah. Soil is everywhere. Do I have to go to Jupiter to buy my soil? Do I have to wait till the moon rains as meteorites on a, the third day of the solstice to get my soil? No. That stuff is everywhere. And you could trip, fall, drop a seed, and drop some water, and it's going to go down. So Monsanto's like, man, y'all cats is lazy. Y'all ain't about to do nothing. Just go on eat my crap. That's, that's how they sit. That's what they're doing. So how we combat that is community. You, you might not have all the energy. You might not have all the energy. You might not have all the energy. But collectively, somebody can make the bed, the, um, the, the, the soil bed, the raised bed. Somebody can provide the seeds. Somebody can sow. Somebody can water. You know what I'm saying? One person grows the zucchini. The other person grows the, um, the pumpkin. The other person grows the corn. The other person grows the beans. We meet here on Sunday, we trade all our stuff, and we gravy. But convenience, y'all, convenience, convenience. Yes. Can you speak on, on your, your discipline as a vegan? Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned energy. You obviously have physical clarity mm -hmm. versus those who are not on that type of discipline, that diet. Okay. Well, and I know the difference. Um, he, the, the brother just asked, can I speak, can I elaborate a little bit on me being a vegan and the mental clarity and the health and everything like that? Like when I, when I got to high school, I had a, uh, the opportunity to choose what I wanted to eat because I was old enough. So I was, I was young. So you know what I did? I was like, yeah, I want to know what the big deal is about. So I ate everything under the sun all through high school, all in four years, and made the conscious decision on my own when I graduated to revert back. Because I noticed the fatigue, I noticed the fogginess, I noticed the change. I noticed I was looking older. I was like, wow, what's going on here? You know, so I had to change it back, you know, and when I, when I changed my diet back, I saw the difference. I saw the using of the bathroom. I saw the clearness of my urine, huh? Some clear urine with no suds. How about that? You know, 
all these particular signs that the body gives you to let you know that everything's working accordingly. You got to pay attention to the body and its signs. And when you notice that you're taking things and they're making you feel uplifted, you know it's something good. But if you know that thing's knocking you out and making you short-tempered, ill-mannered, gaining weight and all those other things, leave it alone. Yes. All right, so the sister just said that <laughs> she, bowel, a bowel movement is not supposed to smell. So we used to have that saying, man, she act like her don't stink. You know what I'm saying? And it's not supposed to. It really isn't. Because let me tell you this. If you're drinking lots of water, you're eating mangoes and pineapples and stuff like this, and it's moving right through you, it's probably going to smell like mangoes and pineapples. Okay, I know if I have some Indian food with some real strong spices and I use the bathroom, it smells like them spices. You see what I'm saying? But if you're eating corpses and starch and blood, <laughs> you think when cows got fat tumors on the side of them, they remove them? No, that thing be up in there with all the rest of the stuff. And if you're eating a, a hot dog, you don't know what's in there. It could be people in there. It's just little, it's like a little baloney. Like, you don't know what it is. Mystery meat. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, your bowels is gonna smell like mystery meat. If you have it, yes. I got a question about, um, I have a lot of clients that have cancer. Yes. And I'm trying to see, um, how do you counteract you know, when they when they take in the chemo and you you see those persons fighting for their life and they're trying to find out was it environmental, was is it something that they was putting on their skin, is it something that they was eating genetically? How do you how do you um treat cancer the doctor way and with yourself as well? Like some people say the body became too acidic and so you know, you no, help I'm me with that. All right, so we all got cancer, all of us. There's not a day that goes by that there's some abnormal, come on, man, listen. Every, you got 100 trillion cells, uh, three quarters of them have a nucleus. So 75% 75, 75 of your cells got a nucleus with six feet of DNA in there, which means you got enough DNA to go from here to the sun and back 300 times. You have to constantly replicate, duplicate, transcribe that code all day, every day. You're going to have typos. You're going to forget the dot of I. You're going to forget to cross the T. That's a mutation. But you also have mechanisms to correct that mutation. But if I'm reading your, your stuff and I see that there's an issue, man, you know how many people were misdiagnosed with cancer last year? Everybody got, oh, you, you want it? You want it? Everybody gets cancer. Like, that's how they're doing it now. Like a grab bag, you know? And how do you deal with it? It was real interesting how you started to question off. You were saying they're on the chemotherapy and that's the problem. Listen, I tell you, you got cancer when you really don't. Then you get on the plan. Now you do. Let me tell you something. So y'all do not mistake me one bit. Chemotherapy is trash. Do you hear me? It's trash. It doesn't play a good role no matter, I don't care if it's upside down, inside out, I don't care if you put whipped cream on it. It's not for you. It's chemotherapy, it's radiation. It's there to mutate, it's there to kill. So you can't be on chemo and then be like, what can I take to offset this? You're voluntarily doing that thing. It's not part of your system. Chemotherapy ain't one. It's not like the immune digestive system. I got my chemotherapy system. No, you, you volunteered to do that thing. So you can't, like, who, who's playing? Who's in the finals right now? So, Le, so, Le, so LeBron, LeBron can't be on both teams, can he? Can he dunk the ball and then pass it to himself for the other team and then lay that up? You on one team or the other. What team are you on? You on the chemo team or you on mama's team? Which team you rocking with? You can't do both. Any? 
second part. I agree, because yeah. after doing hair so many years, everybody have cancer. Yeah. And I'm trying to um, present to them, you need, maybe you need to get a third, fourth, seventh opinion. It's no way you have cancer. Maybe everybody, you, look, not maybe, in that aspect. Maybe you need to turn your phone off. Maybe you need to stop looking at a computer screen for 20 hours. Maybe you just need to stop standing under a halogen and a fluorescent bulb all day long. Maybe you should get out of that cubicle that you spend 15 hours in. Maybe you should stop working overnight because you're supposed to be sleeping at that time, okay? Maybe you should stop dealing with all of that electro pollution from the radio, from the music, from the microwave, from the appliances. How many appliances do we have in our existence as opposed to 20 years ago? 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Cancer wasn't here like it was 50 years ago because there wasn't a TV in every room 50 years ago, okay? We had telephones that were landlines where I had to It took 20 minutes to dial a number. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like that no more. You know, they don't even know what that rotary, rotary, what is a rotary, you know? We are in a different place that no human being has ever been. We are being bombarded by all of these dangerous things that you can't see. You can't see radio waves. You can't see UV waves, microwaves. You can't see what's coming out of this cell phone. Huh? Your eyes have melanopsin. Melanopsin is a blue pigment that recognizes the sun being blue, I mean the sky being blue during the day. Will let your body know that it's daytime. Let me act like it's daytime. At nighttime, if you hit it with blue light, artificial blue light, you're fooling the melanopsin. You're going to get rid of the melanopsin. And then you're telling your body it's daytime. So it's going to act like it's daytime. So then you're going to get up in the morning and still be tired. Like, man, I slept, but I didn't sleep. Yeah, because you were sleeping like this. And everybody's, this is everybody. This is everybody. This is everybody's intention. This is what's killing everyone. That's why they call it a smartphone, because obviously we're not. <laughs> we're not smart. The phones are, you know? Hybrid foods, I can, yes. And. Oh, hang them upside down or get like a, um, go to like Home Depot and get screens that you put in the windows and lay them down flat in a shaded area and lay them all out separate from one another and in the shade and they'll dry. And if you wanted to turn your can you juice the leaves? You can juice the leaves, you can make a tea, mm -hmm. you can dry the root, powder it up. Yep and do it that way. Hybrid foods, you, and it's funny because you, you asked about lemon earlier. Lemon is a hybrid, believe it or not. Yeah. Broccoli is a hybrid. Beets, carrots, um, even collards, believe it or not. Collards are like a mixture of, of cabbage and kale. You can tell when you look at it. It's kind of a combo between the two of them. Um, sometimes hybrids was made for, um, for nutritional reasons. Sometimes they were made for war, like lemon was a war thing. We needed something quick that we could take to give us quick energy. That's why it's chucked full of citric acid and your respiratory cycle is called the citric acid cycle. So it's like, let me just take the straight cycle so I can have my energy. If you slice a lemon in four and you tired and eat that thing, you ain't gonna be tired no more. Come on now, you, that, that potent sour tartness is gonna take you right through the roof, you know? Um, but hybrids, just to define it, is when you take two original plants and you marry them together to yield another one, like sweet potatoes. Yes? Not on lemons. I eat a lot of skins, but um, citrus I don't because the oil content is just too strong for me. I can't. Nah. Like that, and it's there for the bugs. Like if you ever like peel the skin, you'll see it shoot. And it's not the juice, it's act from the fruit, it's actually from the skin. Man, you get that thing in your eye, it'll be a problem, you know? But yeah, it's powerful. Is it bad to eat them? Well, it depends on what your intent is. If you're trying to like live the most optimum way, as an original individual did at one point in time, then you're gonna get the closest back to that original lineup, which means you don't wanna have no hybrids in there. If you're making a transition from chitlins 
Like, I'm not going to hit people with the hybrid boy. Because it's like, let me just get you to put the pig boo-boo tube down. Okay. Can you put down the pig boo-boo tube? Even when you cook it, it smells like boo-boo tube. It don't smell like roses. Come on, man. That's my thing. Like, can I give you a, a, a vegan pulled pork sandwich that I do with jackfruit? I do a pulled pork jackfruit with, with a red coleslaw on top. It's crazy. With the spelt bun, with the mac and cheese, and the collard greens. They be just flipping out. So I'm like, let me do that for you. Then when you see you can handle that and do that and you're, you're getting your energy and you're like learning and everything, then I say, okay, why don't you take a week and try this out? Why don't you take two weeks and try this out? Why don't you take a month to do this? And when people start to grow and get a cape and feel like Superman, they're not going to go after kryptonite no more because they like flying. You see what I'm saying? But you got to get them there and it's not going to happen overnight, you know? Yes. <laughs> I love to cook. Yes. I'm all cooked. Okay. After listening to you today, <laughs> you got to throw your cookbook. <laughs> Anybody who has a cookbook that has recipes in there they like, just replace the meat with a vegetable. Just that simple. That's it. Mar the same way they told you to put that, that, that pork or that beef in the fridge for three days to marinate it with that basil and that thyme and, and the garlic and the onion, do the same thing with an eggplant. Do the same thing with some squash. Do the same thing with something else. Put it in the oven. Put it on the grill. Treat it the same way. What did it say in verse 129? Let the fruit be your meat. Meaning whatever you do with meat, you can do with the fruit. Okay? Yep. All right, so I'm about to take the last two because we all the way at, I don't even know what time it is now. Like, I just, big brother long with, I'm, I'm like my big brother. This is like Red Pill. This is how Red Pill do. He just go and go and go. Yes. Okay, so I, I saw that the same thing you teach me. Um, and so that the same thing said that mucus is the cause of all disease. That's right. We're making mucus, we want to make mucus. That's right. Can you, like, elaborate, elaborate on that? Real easy. I could do that easy. Everybody whip out their cell phones. Repeat the question. Yes, yes. She said that she is an advocate and a follower of Dr. Sabi's teaching. Dr. Sabi said that um, all diseases is the compromising of the mucous membrane, or rather, all diseases start with mucus. You know, mucus leads to all diseases. So can I elaborate on that? So I followed with contradicting myself. I just told you all to stop getting on your phones. But I need you all to pull your, your, your smartphones out. And I want everybody to Google influenza, influenza virus. Influenza virus. We're going to do this together. Oh, you went, you went with the Siri. <laughs> Serious with the Siri. It's like, I'm going to ask her. I'm not going to look. All right. Yep, yeah, I'm trying to, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Okay, all right, so if you type in influenza in Wikipedia, everybody go to Wikipedia so we can make it all, all one. If you go to influenza in Wikipedia, you know how letters are blue, you can click on them, go to another screen. You're going to see influenza virus in the first paragraph. Y'all see it? Yeah. Click on influenza virus. Tell me what pops up. Okay, now scroll down, and I want y'all to look at the etymology of the word and tell me what it says. Oh, everybody gets their flu vaccines for what? Wow. So, <laughs> like he said, all diseases is mucus, 
Every disease is supposedly the flu. They have you get the flu vaccine. What is the flu? The flu is mucus. Mucus membrane, water, live foods, running, swimming, sun gazing, meditating, yoga, breathing exercises. You have a body, use it. Don't just loan your body to somebody else to get a check. We pimp ourselves, did you know that? Y'all didn't know we pimp ourselves, did you? you like, man, I don't know what to do with myself. Man, how much would you give me for me? Man, I'll give you about, about 600 a week. So, let's go for it. No, I am definitely not. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on right now um, in that inner circle um, with Sabi. He just asked, am I still affiliated with, with the Usha Village? Um, I am not. Um, the people that are down there did not have my Baba's best interest in heart. Um, and it's coming to the surface. You know, if anybody's following YouTube or anything, you're seeing all types of stuff coming. I'm nowhere near any of that. You know, because I'm like, when you deal with an atom and they got orbitals, you know, around it, I wasn't the innermost orbital. I mean, I was with him personally, but you know, when you got like a superstar, you got an entourage, you might be that dude you grew up with. You can call him, you know what I'm saying? But he rolling with the crew. And the group of people that was around him just did not have his best interest in heart, and all of that's coming to the surface now, and I'm just not, I'm just like over here. So everybody can see that train wreck, you know what I'm saying? And me, this is how I keep his legacy going. I'm not talking about drama and debates on television. I'm like, how can I come and help you with your family and help you with your children through the actions? Because this is what he would do. So I'm doing it through application. I'm not doing it through the other thing. Okay. Last. Okay. Yeah. Last one. Last one. Okay. What California? No. Definitely not. No. California, as far as I know. Um, has been compromised by the help, by the help, by the help, by the people who is throwing out the trash and washing dishes and answering phones, and now people that are formulated. And I don't know what's in that stuff. You know what I mean? So I'm not about to sign off on any of it. You know, I could be wrong, but I'd rather be wrong that way than tell you to go about it, and then you have some crazy reaction to some type of problem. Okay, my mother was with the man for the past 35 years, that's how old I am. She has information. Ma'a, who was with him longer than that, she has information. You see what I'm saying? I was sitting there watching him the whole time. I got information. I know about the circle that was present during the court case when he won, when he moved up to, my mother's the one that found a spot in Brooklyn where the Barclays Center is at right now, okay? Like, I was there, so I deal with the people that I know of and the effects that they made, you know what I'm saying? In regards to all the other outlets to get Sabi's products, I'm gonna say this, Sabi has transcended. He's no longer here. His message has been left in many people, millions of people, and specifically more concentrated in a small group. Who that entire small group is, I can't tell you every single person, but I'll let you know, I was there, my mother was there, my aunt was there, and there was a couple other people there. I can't speak for everybody else. Hmm? Well, I tell you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell you this. He was 80 something years old, 82 years old, with a three year old daughter and a son on the way. So, like. You're not just gonna like just die out of nowhere. So I'll leave it at that, you know? But with that being said, <laughs> with all that being said, I keep his legacy going through application and action. I'm really an advocate of, of helping the people by teaching them plant-based diets and herbs and modalities. Um, in October from the 10th through the 17th, I'm hosting a wellness retreat um, it's 
eight days, it's seven nights, planes included, foods included, um, lodging is included, and you're getting cooking workshops, you're getting superfood expeditions, and you're getting herbal formulation classes, um, in addition to all the meals and everything like that, so much more um, this October. I think we have three, we got three, I had 12 spots, we're down to three, um, and everywhere I go, I announce it because, you know, some people just, they want, they've been looking for something like that. Right. Um, so if you need any further information, you come see me once I get down. Um, oh, it's going to be, sorry, it's going to be in St. Croix, home, uh, Virgin Islands. So no passport is needed and it's beautiful down there. But you will be able to see for yourself. We're going to stay on a property with baobab trees, two giant baobab trees are on the property. It's beautiful. Hmm? I was going to say that after, but you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that now. You just want me to tell everybody what it is. The ticket is 35 and it's 15 down. Um, you can either pay the whole thing or you can put 15 down just to lock your spot in. And then we have a monthly pan, plan up until September. But like I said, the plane is included, the um, food is included, and the lodging is included, as well as all the workshops and everything else. Once you get there, you won't have to do nothing. You know, we're going to handle everything, give you a great experience because. My company, Green Life Botanicals, is more than a product. It is an experience. Um, and with that, I want to say www.kt.archdegree.com. I'm also kt.archdegree on Instagram. And what am I forgetting? Am I forgetting anything? And Kamani Tate on Facebook. If anybody else needs any further information, just let me know. Oh, yeah, the email again is lovegreenlife at gmail, L-U-V. G R E E N L I F E at gmail.com. I'll just put your article. I know you're very busy, but like, we'll respond back to you. Oh, no, we respond. We respond. If somebody want to come down and say, I got to respond to them, <laughs> if they want to come. And we got a lot of people in, so we kind of filter through. But we're down, we got three spots left. And once that's locked in, then we just move forward from there. Yeah, this is the first retreat. Once this gets wrapped up, we'll be doing another one. This is because I want to be able to take everybody into the environment, give them an example, so when they come back home, they can really hit the ground running. Yeah. So, um. thank you all so much for coming out, hearing me out. Um, like I said, if you all need any further information, I'm here. You he was about to say... Um, peace and light. Thank y'all for holding tight to the end. Y'all some troopers. Oh yeah. Y'all the real MVPs. Um, in the back, I have a little table set up with the products. If y'all have any questions, comments, we'll be back there um, to, to help you all out. I do have cards with the number, the email, and the website on there back there as well. If you're walking past, feel free to grab one. Um, the other thing, if you want the recipe for these collard greens, because I'm telling y'all, back in Detroit, East College? we got to give them something. We said a cooking demonstration. We got to give y'all something. Um, we're going to do the noodles. We gonna, <laughs> them noodles. <laughs> she didn't just say noodles, but them noodles. Them noodles, so. right. <laughs> no, seriously. So if you want the recipe for them noodles or the collard greens, I have back on the MacBook back there um, uh, a notepad thing set up. Just type your email in, type your name. Um, if you have any other contact information, just so we can keep in touch or you want to be on the email list, just please provide that and um, we'll make sure we send those recipes out. I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah, by the way, I've been cooking green beans this whole time. I'm not about to take this home, so. Oh, there was going to be none. Yeah, this is a surprise, surprise. So if anybody just wants to take these on their way out, I'll just season them a little bit more. This is for the troopers. Exactly. He said this is for the troopers, though. She like, let me get it now. I want mine now. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you came out. All right. That should be good. All right, so it's hot.
Remember the ones y'all had earlier were cooked and they sat. So you know how soul food tastes better the more it sits. So this is fresh. All right. Yeah. I got one. Oh, okay. Got you. Man, thank y'all. Man, what are you talking about? Come on now. There we go. Thank, thank you. you. Woo. Boy, that'd be some work, man. <laughs> man, appreciate you, man. This is your this is your world. This is your world. Oh, oh, yes. She she you know, your mom your mom wants a picture. Oh, oh y'all getting your one. Yo, get in there, get in there, get in there. Oh, you want one? Oh. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, brother. Oh, man. Thank y'all. Oh, where are you located? We're in Detroit right now. Yeah, Shanika Duckett. Nurturing America. Look at that. Oh, yes, sir. Here you go. Got it. Thank you. Excuse me, excuse me. One, one quick announcement. On June 25th, we're going to have a, a Malcolm X celebrating his birthday at Cleveland Park. Um, this is sponsored by Mother Effie and the Malcolm X Center. Effie, I'm sorry, I mess it up every time. Um, but June 25th, it's on a Sunday. It starts at 2 p.m at Cleveland Park.